Today, we are gonna be talking about things Nintendo could do with the Switch 2 that will make us very happy. Or, we still don't have a clue what this thing is gonna be, no. but that's not gonna stop us. From speculating. No. Very educationally speculating, because we do kinda know, because we've worked there for so long, we kinda get into their head, but we, we don't know. Every day we all collectively kind of harden our, our thoughts and feelings about what uh, this is going to be. But yeah. there are some small details, things yes. Nintendo could do, yes. that really could make or break the system. Exactly. So we are going to get into some scenarios and mm -hmm. talk about, would this be good? Would this be bad? Would this be catastrophically yes. bad? Exactly. Uh, because I think these are all realistic possibilities that are on the table yes. that are good to talk about now, just in case they happen. Exactly. Mentally prepare yourself. That's right. Yes. Nothing is better than mentally preparing yourself so you don't get fully disappointed. Blindsided. Blindsided. Wah, wah, wah. Oh. <laughs> like me every day with you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, also, in this fun episode, we're going to be talking about a Nintendo story time where we were doing, working on an event for Donkey Kong Country Returns yes. on Wii. Right. But it was nearly a catastrophic disaster. Yes, a giant banana nearly fell on me and crushed me. No, that's not exactly what happened, but it's not. 7,000 bananas not far almost from, killed Not you. far from the truth, though. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we have some fun stuff up on the channel if you want to check it out after you finish this podcast, of course. Yeah. Um, I guess now Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is out? Yes, it is. And we're going to be talking about that more in our mm -hmm. impressions. You beat the game now. I beat the game, yep. But we do have another video that's up talking about our initial impressions and showing off some of our gameplay from when we were a little bit earlier mm -hmm. on in the game. Yeah. So if you just want to get a look at like, what what is this? Uh, what did Kit and Krista think? We do like the game, uh, but this is a good way to just, just get a take on it from us. Yeah, I really like that video because we did sort of like a hybrid game let's play thing plus sharing what we thought about the game so yeah if you want to get a, just a look at like the game play itself we do share that with you in our latest video i have a great right. name for this new type of video it's called a quick look surely nobody has ever used uh, that sort of a name for a video like that where you talk about and play a game hey. no we are the first oh. we are truly pioneers Don't <laughs> this is where a giant bomb comes and drops a huge bomb on us. Uh, they have a lot of lawyers over there, they let do. me tell you. <laughs> They're all lawyers. <laughs> they are known for being lawyers, yes. Uh, we have also posted uh, the newest Super Kitten Krista 64, which is our NES scavenger hunt. This is a really fun, very video. fun I love this one. Uh, this is out now. Some people have been talking about it, uh, noting that it was quite competitive. The it's challenges very are back. Competitive. We did challenges. 2022, which is our first year, we did a lot of challenges. 2023, yeah. we only did a couple challenges. Right. Because you got tired of losing. No, that's not true at all. But the challenges are back now. I'm not going to say who won this one. Right. But people were noting on the electricity <gasps> and the fierceness of the competition. Oh, there was a moment that I, when I was editing the video, that I was like, wow, you really were mad. It was not play mad. It was legit mad. So if you want to see Kit get really, really Well, you mad like me, to break rules or make up rules on the fly or I do not do any tell me thing. that I cheated. No. Like various fabrications no. of the truth. I will just let the people, please, okay. watch the video. Tell us, tell me in the comments if you think this was fair. Because uh -huh. I'm not, I'm just going to leave it to the, the, the court of the people sure. to decide. Okay? All Let's right. Leave it at that. Fine. Okay. Um, you know, we did have that great shot of all of the NES games that I have. Yes. And some people have been saying, like, oh, you got some holes in your collection. You do have It's true. Holes. I do. I do. So this is my collection from when I was growing up. Yeah. Uh, and since, you know, starting last year, we got more into retro games. Right. And we went to a lot of stores and conventions, and I was buying a lot of stuff on eBay, honestly. But there are a lot of just key, like, you got you to have... These Zelda games, you gotta have mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers 2. It's like I don't have those because they're on NSO. So I don't feel mm. like like the need to have it okay. because it is readily available to me now in a way that I don't I, it's, gra it's great. It's great. You should have it just for like posterity. Well, why don't you get it for me then if okay. I need it so badly? <laughs> wow. I need you it for posterity. Buy it for me then. Why not? The other thing I learned last I'll year have it to buy it for you. was in most cases, you don't need to get that anxious about these games just like vanishing from the face of the yeah, earth. Yeah, that's true. Like all this stuff is 
again, mostly out there and available. Right. And um, John Riggs is somebody we became friends with over the past yeah. year. And he, like, I watch a lot of his videos, and he's yeah, very too. famous for, like, I just sold off my whole collection. Like, it's no big deal. If there's stuff I want to get back, I can have it I back. Or he's like, he was like, here's my collection now. I have 10 games. This, yeah. These are the ones that I felt like having now. Like, I he think... He has such a good outlook on that, I feel right. like. I think previously I had a lot more anxiety of like, oh, this stuff is old. It's going to be vanished mm -hmm. into the ether if I don't snap it up now and hold on to it forever. Yeah. It's that, less of that now. That's actually maybe more the case for some of the like like the DS generation. I was gonna say the DS generation. Where the is prices more so. are really fluctuating. Right. Like, Even like the Wii stuff is starting to get a little shaky in terms yeah, of price fluctuation. Right. But when I look at like NES games, like a lot of it's in that kind of twenty dollar it's like, okay, fine, yeah. twenty bucks. If I want that, I can I can pick it up for twenty bucks or exactly. less. Yeah. If it's a lot, you know, I think I'm sure Super Mario Brothers 2 is not that expensive. If if yeah. I wanted to get it, so it's like, eh. I'm okay. Yeah, you're not anxious about it. But I feel like we do like, you know, kind of going to these retro um, shows. Like, we loved Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Yes. We like going to vintage, you know, video game stores. I think if you saw it and it was a reasonable price, you'd pick it up, you know, but you're not, like, Whoa. desperately. <laughs> I mean, I didn't pick it up when we were there, but a. sure. You had some very <laughs> unflattering things to say about the NES controller as well that I, I didn't take kindly to. I, Honestly, nowadays, I'm like, how did I survive in those days? Like, how did I play these games? How did I live my life? Like, I I don't know. <laughs> because I just have such a hard time going back to a retro controller. Like, my hands is it is don't... it D-pad versus stick? Or I cannot do the is it Is it just the fact that it's like a rectangle? Both. There are some sharp edges. The edges are sharp. So my we were hands playing. Are cramping. The D pad is very difficult for me to use. I need like an analog stick. I don't know. We should say we were, we were playing on the Hyperkin Retron. Right. And they have their own controller, which is a very good controller, it is but a good it, but it does actually have some ergonomic touches that right. go beyond the original NES That's controller. True. So That's if you were true. using that, your hand would be even more mangled. I was, I don't know, I was having a really hard time, but yeah. it's okay. Did you ever I get blisters like, on your thumb? Yeah, I, yeah, you know what, I was gonna say, I've been playing so much Prince of Persia, I think I hurt my thumb. What? It like really hurts at the joint because I've been like grasping, I've been playing in handheld mode All right. on my I'll Switch. I'll get your AARP and now, membership <laughs> and you can talk to that weird Mario that was at CES, he can, he can prescribe <laughs> you, can, you some anti-inflammatories sort of like, or yeah, something. Yeah, give me like a physical therapy <laughs> regimen. Give me the, the crazy monitor. Yeah, I don't know, I have no idea what I was doing. Maybe my hands were just more malleable as a child or something, but I'm having a really hard You're time. You're weak now. You're soft I'm and weak. weak. I don't know what Come happened. On. It's that dual sense. I'm spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful, comfortable dual sense. But yeah, that is a very fun stuff. video. Uh, you should check it out. Yes. And again, the challenges are back. Oh, yeah. Get ready. That, 20, was, that 2024 challenge board is going to pop off. Great way to kick it off with this for sure. Right. It was very exciting. And then finally, I've said this once before, we had to take it out of a podcast because I jinxed myself and got sick immediately. Oh God, it's not happen. happening this time. I'm saying it. The final Mario RPG stream has already happened. We have finished the game. The credits have rolled. We have Super Pistachio. Padded. Super is Pistachio took a vic took joy. a victory lap. The MVP <laughs> of this stream. No, we finally did it. I don't. I can't even remember when we started, but it was maybe it like was late so summer. So ridiculous because we both had like the rose-colored glasses of like we'll finish this game before the remake comes out, no problem. And then it was like a slew of hurdles for us to finally get to this point. And then like so many things happened. From when we started to when we finished, like we literally got a new studio and moved. <laughs> Life has changed. Life yes. happened during the Super Mario RPG stream. Um, but yes, round of it, applause that we finally did it. It is funny that last week, it was, it was our 100th episode, we were talking like, oh, you know, being so consistent with these things is no problem. We're, yeah. You know, it's, it's a piece of cake. And then like, we cannot be consistent. We, we were not consistent with that no. to save our lives. Yeah, we learned a lot from that experience. And we love streaming, but we have to change yes. it up. So, so <laughs> next, uh, full Persona 5 playthrough. Look yeah, forward to it. Yeah, starting now. Uh, no. We'll see you when we're 89. And no, we're going we're gonna to do less full game playthroughs so, yeah. and... You might see a challenge come to a stream at some mm -hmm. point. Um, you know, or, you know yeah. playing playing the game du jour of some some hot new release. Yeah, and doing more stuff with you guys, like playing yes. multiplayer games online together, like that right. kind of stuff will, will be kind of the new 
you know, the new streaming theme for 2024. Right. So anyhow, right. we're so glad that we <laughs> finished this game. It was great. I can now finally finish my You can remake, go back, yeah. Which will just take five minutes because somehow <laughs> the time is very compounded in the remake. Right, um, right. But it was so much, regardless of how long it took us to do this, it was so much fun. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us during these many, many hours. And it was really fun for me to experience this game that I've never played before on the, the original version and the remake. Doing that at the same time yeah. for a game I've never played that everyone has told me that I would love was super cool. And I love that experience. Yes. So, yeah. All right. We are moments away from getting into our Switch 2 scenarios. But first, we got to shout out our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Nice. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I'm fully in my January malaise right now. Oh no, what does that where, mean? You know, it's like after the holidays, you're trying to get back into a more normal routine with eating. Like you're not like having these huge holiday gatherings every week with family and friends. So I'm just trying to be a little bit more healthy and, and also spend less time in the kitchen. So yes. HelloFresh has saved me on both fronts. Okay. It's so easy to, you know, choose healthy meals even the ones that are really quick to pre prepare and everything is farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients. So it makes it super easy to like, kind of just stay on track with all of my, my January eating. Yes. It is now uh, the football playoffs. Oh. Go 49ers, by the way. And there's oh. there's just games happening all the time. That's true. And some of these games like seep into dinner time. I don't I don't I am also trying to be a little bit healthier. Yeah. So I don't want to just like oh it's good pizza you know I don't want to order out. Yeah, yeah. So it is nice that I can make this fast enough and fit it into like a halftime. Oh halftime. Or if it's not the 49ers, I don't mind missing you know a little a little bit of it to go yeah. make some some good food. How how long is halftime? How long is halftime? Mm, halftime's like 20-ish well, minutes they or have, so. HelloFresh has the quick and easy 15 minute recipe. That's what I'm talking so about. So you can just do it that and be right there. That's what I'm talking That's about. perfect. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And there's so many options every week and they cycle those out all the time. It is uh, very wonderful and avoid the dreaded food rut. So yes. go to hellofresh.com slash kit Krista free and use code kit Krista free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash KitKristaFree with code KitKristaFree. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Who does not like free stuff? That's we'll good. We'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. All right. Okay. To keep this entertaining, we are going to be using a Would You Rather format. Yes. So, so we have each prepared five choices mm -hmm. for the other person yes. to evaluate. Right. I don't know about you. For me, oh. my choices are not like good. Some of them are like choose from these two good things or yeah, choose from these two too. bad things. Yeah, me too, me too. So I think we're gonna really go through every permutation I think so too. of this. And we might have some of the same stuff, but that's fine because it might yeah. be matched up against something else. Right. Would you like to go first? I would actually. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All the right. first one I have. Would you rather have some fun? I'm calling those personality updates. Oh boy. Like uh, folders and themes, yes. No, like I'll take it. Like street pass. Oh. Oh or wow. Or other ways that you can customize your system. So yes. just something folders and themes. Something that you know Folders and themes. Stop yelling folders <laughs> I've already and I'm already saying yes to Who this. Who cares about folders <laughs> and themes? Okay, anyways, um so would you rather have that like the yes. personality updates, but it makes your system a little bit slower? Oh. oh, we're back to this. Oh, the battery. Your battery. Oh, no. Oh, I hadn't. Okay, yeah. Or, or, do you want to keep Switch just super basic? It is what it is. Just like the Switch is very sort of bare bones. Mm. But it is snappy. It's fast. Yeah. And it has a really long battery life. So you're lumping Street Pass into this other stuff. Yeah. I, 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 I considered that to be sort of the, the Nintendo, like kind of like the Wii U oh, slash boy. 3DS era, like kind of personality things where you can have themes. 
Because I would, I would say things. that street pass is more than a little personality, you know, express yourself sort of thing. But it is like an extra thing that yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. gaming system does not have to. Okay. Include, okay. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I was gonna say that uh, on 3DS, like Street Pass, I never felt like killed my battery when it right. was running. Right. So that's not what I'm too worried about. But I really do like how snappy the it Switch is, very is. and when it yes. comes to again folders and themes, I'm glad to sacrifice those to right. have the snappiness. Street Pass is where you get me though, because that is something that I really I know. that is something that I really want. I know. Everybody wants it, but it could come at a at a cost, at a price. Oh, uh, so it's it's so it's a little bit more um, kludgy to to get around, right. and the battery is not as good. Right, the battery is probably going to be not as good, and so so you but you could keep you could forgo all of that stuff. You just keep it a bare bones thing like Switch, but it you know seven years uh, later the thing is still really snappy. Yeah, the battery life yeah. is still pretty darn good. So. I'll take it. I'll take the hit. And I will hope for the best that they can improve that over time with some some updates. So you're taking the personality updates. Over. I want Street Pass. You want the Street Pass. I want Street Pass bad, okay, bad, badly. Bad, badly. Yes. You would sacrifice those but other two things. I don't really care about. Right, honestly. but let's say like the battery is like it's like eight hours without Street Pass, and then like mm. four hours with. Eh, I mean, I, I, I mean, less. I play things on the Steam Deck where I'm lucky to get two hours. So, so you don't care. No, I don't. I don't mind and it. it. It's no. a chug a little bit. Yeah, even like if you're on an airplane, like most planes have a plug and. Okay. Yeah, I feel like the battery. Would you, would, do you think that if there was Street Pass like on the new Switch, you would take it with you more? Because 3DS was pretty easy to like. It's small, right? True, true. So do you um, really think you're going to be like lugging a Switch around all the time for Street Passes? Uh, yes, I do actually. Really? Yeah, I still take it quite a number of. Like, I brought it here today, and we're not doing anything with it, but I brought it with me. Okay. okay so okay, yes. Okay. And I mean, I, I don't, I mean, a 3DS doesn't fit in my pocket. I still have to bring some sort of a bag for right. it. So yes. Yeah. Yes. I want this. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want this. Oh, the intensity yeah. for Street Pass <laughs> is palpable. <laughs> okay, you go next. <laughs> All right. Let's see where to get started here. Ooh, where to I'll get do, started? I'll do one that also includes Street Pass, too, because oh, we were talking we, about we that. we do love, everybody wants a Street Pass. So my first one is simply Street Pass Returns. That's all it is. It's not lumped in with these other things. It's like we're, Street Pass is back. Just Street Pass is back. We're integrating it into Switch the two. Switch 2 experience. Okay, okay. Uh, it's it, you know it's into games. You can integrate it into games. Which, oh my god, it'd be so good. <laughs> or, or get this other one. Uh -huh. Nintendo commits to greatly expanding its retro game oh. offerings. To make this possible, the NSO subscription model is abandoned. Oh. And virtual console returns, <gasps> where games are purchased a la carte. Which of these would you like? Oh, they're both so good. I love a virtual console. So we're kind of, no, it, this, this is about choosing, like, things. what what thing that has passed do you want back? Oh, Street Pass man. or virtual console? And again, the promise is, we're going to be trying harder with these retro games. Because right. we have the virtual console. Right. And instead of this, like, let me just drop whatever. Instead of whatever, like, eh, you get some stuff, well, but you're only paying $20. Yeah. You know, so. You're like trickling it out in a stupid way. Right. Ugh. Right. Um, no, I, I, I need the Street Pass. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> virtual console. Does that mean that I'll, I'll just have NSO, though? They'll keep NSO. They'll just keep the NSO subscription. So I still yeah. get it some way. Right. That's what I would pick too, because again, it's like there's other ways I can play those there's games. There's other ways I can play it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I just need the street pass. But whereas okay? street pass, like either you have it or you don't. That's right. Right. I want that. And, and it, to your point, it means other things. Like, what does street pass integrate into? Yes, the is games. It, integrate it like it into games? the games. Is it like, do we get the whole like little like mini games back? Right. We collect those little puzzle pieces. Find I, me. I, I need a yes. puzzle piece so badly right now. <laughs> I will give anything for like a me. Right. And returning the me's too. That would be great. Oh man. Now okay. I mean, I, I know why they did uh, with the original Switch. They did not want to prioritize. One, one way of playing over exactly. the other, yeah. which I understand. Yeah. But now, if you're just continuing the concept of the Switch, I think people know enough. It's like, yeah, I can play it you know, whichever way. Right. But I have this feature, which I can only use taking it with me. Right. I think maybe their minds might be more open to something like that. Exactly. Because like, yeah, people know what this is. They right. know it's not just a handheld yeah. system. When we were launching Switch, that we asked that question. Like, why isn't sort of some of the yeah. more handheld portable features like Street Pass that was previously in right. their other handheld, which right. is a 3DS, why is that not included? Because this is also like basically taking the place mm -hmm. of a Nintendo handheld system. 
the development team said very specifically they want to make sure there's equal weight in all three yeah. ways of play, yeah. which is high, like kind of ironic and hilarious because I think tabletop mode just basically is forgotten. That's the like, one that is. That's like, the whatever. one that like yeah. they really try, but it just never. That's that's really barely so now it's just either handheld or docked right, right. TV mode. Right. Um, but you know what are you gonna? Which do? I think was smart it's then. Fine. Yeah. It was smart. Smart then, then because yes. that was like such a departure. People from needed to know. Wii U. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Here we go. Good. Next one. A little bit different. So would you rather have a Switch 2 that includes significant tech improvements? Okay. So like 4K, maybe they have some sort of updated dock that up it in, in TV mode, really stable, 60 frames per second, other like techie bells and whistles. Yes. Um, but it, it will cost like comparable to a PS5, like $500. Or... Would you have some, you, there's going to be some improvement from Switch Now to Switch 2, uh -huh. some tech improvements, maybe it's a little bit more powerful, but it's not going to be on par with uh -huh. like a PS5. Right. Um, but, so, it, but it only costs like 350 400 bucks. So the current rumor going around is that it's going to be close to a PS4. PS4. So that is not your first scenario. No. Your first scenario is like really like maxed out. It is like maxed out. It's like cherried out. Yeah. It is like oh. it is like a PS5. <gasps> oh. It will run okay. your Elden Ring okay. smooth as butter. You know, it's gonna run like all of the PS5 games like perfectly. Yeah. I don't think that's the best scenario, the the maxed out tech route. Mm. Cause you know, I think one of the reasons that Switch eventually got so many games is this runaway sales hit where people are like, hey, yeah, we should get our games on this because everybody's got one and it's a good opportunity to sell some games. Yeah. Whereas I think a $500 Switch becomes a much more niche device. Mm -hmm. And yes, you could run more of those third-party games on it, but maybe you're making a trade-off with the install base where right. it's just not there, so people maybe wouldn't do it. You know, I am still amazed at how many current games run on the Steam Deck. Yeah. And I think they were really smart about how they put the tech into that, where it's like, we're taking what we need and we're leaving behind what we don't so that we can run games for a good long while. And they're still saying, like, yeah, we're probably not going to put out a new Steam Deck for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I think they can... I, I trust Valve more to make... These sorts of decisions than right. Nintendo, honestly. Yeah, Valve has a lot of experience but with that. But <laughs> there is a path where it doesn't have to be maxed out with everything, and you can still get some of those current games for you know, several years. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get them forever. I think that's the better path. I do think getting some of those games is important, though. I think so, too. In, in, in terms of people not just feeling like, well, this is, you know, this is the usual Nintendo-only device. Right. And I'm going to need to get another system to play, to play these other every, games. everything else. Right. So I'm, I'm taking your second okay. option so here. Okay, so a little bit of an improvement in tech, but not the power of a PS5, but right. it costs less. Right. I think the thing that I worry about with this step is, you know, Switch had the benefit of coming off of the Wii U, where it was very easy to understand what makes it unique and different and what makes it like the next thing for Nintendo. Whereas this one's gonna be harder to do, especially if the form factor and like the, you know, the product proposition, whatever we wanna call it, is gonna be exactly the same. So it's like, what are you gonna do? That's where the gimmicks come in. Well, gotta be careful with those. What are you gonna do to make sure that it feels like a next gen console. What are you gonna do to future proof it? Yeah. Because I'm sure Nintendo is wanting to repeat the long life cycle it's had with Switch. Mm -hmm. um, and how are you gonna do that? How are you gonna have a system that feels like it is you know, future proof the next seven years? Yeah. Um, if you don't, and Nintendo doesn't like to play this tech game at all. Like they hate this game. They know they can't win on power and graphics, they know, but at some point, they do have to play it a little bit or else it's just going to feel like it's already behind. Yeah. So I do worry about that with this, specifically with this next uh, system because I think this is where you got to be real smart to come up with 
what is going to make this feel next gen if you're not going to play the power and graphics game? Like, what is it going to be? Into the so, red ocean we go. Yeah, and Nintendo hates the red ocean. Right. They want to keep it. They want to stay in the blue. So, so yeah, I, I do wonder what it's going to be. This is where they could really, I think, lose their way a little bit. It's a little. Yeah. It's a very dangerous game to play. Okay. You know, who knows what's going to happen? But there you go. All right, next couple of these, I'm going to really put you through the ringer here. Oh, here we go. I'm ready, I'm ready. In an effort to lower the price of Switch oh, 2, here we go. the system does not include a dock which is sold separately. I hate it already. That's option one. I hate it already. Option two. In an effort to lower the price of Switch 2, Joy-Con tech goes unchanged. Oh. An original Switch Joy-Con can be used with the new system. Okay. So this doesn't mean that they can't change the form factor of a Joy-Con but the internal guts of it are exactly the same. Does that it's, mean that we'll have left Joy-Con drift again? I will not be commenting on that. <laughs> will we though? You I, I mean, I think, I think they probably would do something to try and fix that. They need to fix that. But you know, there's no new like feature or thing. It's like, yeah, it's the same HD rumble. It's the same buttons. It's the same everything. But it will, if you had an old Joy-Con, you could put it in there. So th th I think, th I think they're very conscious of like, we cannot have this go over X dollars. They have to, yeah. And it's they certainly not $500. It's not gonna be, so, not, that was like an extreme. But again, it's not gonna be that. they may need to make some sort of a concession like this mm -hmm. to get there. And they have had, you know, we've been through it where they've had some real weird, like, we're not including like a, a power, uh, um, Yeah, an AC that, that felt weird when money. it happened. Nobody, nobody ultimately nobody cared, cared that but much. But they do these, these they kind of like, it's kind of like that thing where they like nickel and dime you right. a little bit. They do that. They have been known to do that. Yeah. Now um, some of this depends on does, does, does the new dock, is it, is it different from the other dock? I'm not, I'm not saying this. I'm you not, I'm like, not saying I, here. I, I don't like know. You are very I don't anti know. the dock does something. I don't know. You just don't know. I feel like the dock is gonna have to do something. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna be okay with an, a, a, a regular Joy-Con. So you're taking the second option here. Yeah, I okay. think so. I, I, I need you to do something but you, with the but, dock. But, 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 but. Now you are famously, you're like, I never play this on a TV. You don't play the Switch on a TV. So but, do, you, do you even need a dock? But if they, the dock has something in it that makes that it That does like, what? That like uprises this thing. Are you are you mode. are you gonna actually play it on a TV then? I might, especially <laughs> if these other like bigger like PS5 right. type games are there. Yeah, that's why I don't play it on TV. Is because I don't feel like any you feel of like my. Feel like it looks bad. I think, kind of feel like it does look bad. Oh. And then it, I feel like all Switch games. This might be such a like a hot take and maybe like a blanket statement that I shouldn't be saying. But from my perspective, like at least the games that I play. I don't feel like they deserve the cinematic TV experience. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. I just don't think so. What a snob. Wait, you just call me a snob? <laughs> oh, I hit you. Are you kidding me? I just, I don't know. I, they I don't mean, deserve it. Wow. I'm sorry. I, the only game that I played in TV mode on Switch for like the first one hour was Tears of the Kingdom. Oh my just God. to watch the beginning movie. And then I was like, oh, I'm good. It looks all right. I'll uh, just play the rest of this on handheld mode. All right. Sorry, but if like it can uprise it to this like w beautiful cinematic experience yeah. for me, like what I do with my PS5 games, I gladly play on TV. Now the point, the reason that I chose this first option is kind of like what we were saying with Street Pass, where it's like they had to include the dock. They had to give you both options yeah. out of the box. But now like- But now it's like maybe people, maybe there are a lot more people like you who are like, I just like this being a handheld and I just want to keep it as a handheld and I don't want to pay. Those docks are expensive. I don't want to pay an extra hundred dollars for this dock, especially if it's going to have all this stuff inside it, which is going to make it expensive. Mm. So they just want so the maybe, option well, could, could they sell it? handheld? Hey, the Switch 2 is $300. You got to pay an extra hundred dollars if you want this dock, but it's $300. That sounds, that just seems so like <laughs> yucky to me. I just don't like it. You can, you, you, you know how this Q&A goes. We are giving consumers the, the choice. choice to play the way they, they want. want. Yeah. Yes, I think I, I've written that Q&A before, honestly. I have written that answer. <laughs> and I have said it with full conviction <laughs> when I was bright, no, just kidding. <laughs> I have, I've definitely said that to like Polygon, so excuse me, sorry. Um, so you are not changing your mind on this? No, I you will, can't. You will keep the, just the old Joy-Con. Give me a next gen system with an updated dock, All right. Nintendo. All right, fine. Great, that's your choice. All right. 
I have a Joy-Con question for you as well. Oh, Actually, good. this is perfect. Oh, good. Um, so I'm going to go there first, and then we'll jump back up to my other one. Um, would you rather see completely redesigned Joy-Con? So they improve all the things, they, they add. With what, with what? What is different about it? Maybe they, they change the form factor so it's more comfortable. I don't yeah. complain that it's like uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they, you know, I don't want them to add any like stupid gimmicks. Like don't do more HD rumble because no one cares how uh -huh. it feels to milk a cow. Uh -huh. but Speak for yourself. Just, okay. It works. <laughs> maybe the left Joy-Con does not drift. I don't know. Um, but anyways, the Joy-Cons are redesigned. Okay. And it's vastly improved. Okay. Or they do something completely off the wall where the Joy-Cons don't detach. Uh, all right. And there's no price implication no. for any of this. Yeah, it's just like a... So what is the argument for keeping it all intact? Basically like a Steam Deck. What is the argument for that? The entire form factor, I think, would be different and probably maybe more comfortable if you don't have to detach I them guess, or... I guess, yeah, sometimes it gets a little loose and wiggly yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Um, Versus do you want the... the but the, you can't share a Joy-Con. You can't share a Joy-Con. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take it off and pretend it's a sandwich right. and eat it. I, I would like them to change the ergonomics of the Joy-Con. Okay. I think when I play handheld, it never feels great. No. Like it's it's okay, yeah. but it never feels great. I would always prefer a, a pro controller, which is why I play more on the TV. Do you like the little like offset? I do like that. You do like the offset. I do like that. Okay. And you know, in the in the case where like there is a detached Joy-Con, it's like this thing's way too small. It's too or small. Yeah, it, I, it, never, it, like, fall I never. I never really hand. play it like this. I'm not yeah. like, the airplane together. Right. 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 We've never really played like a little but, sideways. That is a fun and good option to have. And I do think that gives it uniqueness over some of these other hybrid systems that are out there. So yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go with that. So I, keep I, the detachable Joy-Con that is redesigned. I'm, unless I'm missing something, I don't see a lot of, of upside of just having it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a solid piece of hardware. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how is that, what makes that better? I think it just feels, it's probably gonna be more ergonomic, honestly. Okay. If it if it was. All right. Maybe attached. I'm missing maybe I'm missing something there, but I'll, right. I'll I'll keep the detachable. All right. Part of it. All right. Where are we now? Here we go. Get ready for this. Okay. Switch two is a digital only system. Okay. Or mm -hmm. physical games are available on Switch two, but most require additional downloads or seventy dollar price points to account for the use of game cards. Oh. This is probably an easy one for you, actually. Yeah, I'm a digital girl, so I'm probably okay with it being digital only. I have a digital only PS five. I like it a lot. And this in in this first scenario, it's not like there's two versions. Like there is no version. It's basically a Steam but what Deck. About, what about my digital Switch 1? We'll get to that in another scenario. <laughs> Is there like some sort of like attachment? Oh, don't, don't, like don't, worry, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Okay, yeah, then I, I would go digital. I would go digital. All right. Yeah. I mean... The second scenario is not far from what we have now yeah. on the Switch, right. where a lot of games that are not made by Nintendo require extra downloads. Mm -hmm. We've started to see $70 games that are you know, bigger because they yeah. need bigger cards. So this is kind of a reality a that a reality lot of people are, are dealing yeah. with now. I mean, Nintendo is just so ingrained into the retail environment, though, like that would be a major disruption to yeah. say like, hey, retailers, exactly. you got no more games to. I mean, to you can sell. Shelf, you can right? sell those like cards. A card, that's but it. that's a lot less exciting. Yeah, there's no way. And there's a lot less go need. Fools into for, that. For that. Yeah, exactly. So maybe, maybe, what do you think is better for Nintendo? Maybe, maybe not so much for you, Krista. For Nintendo, what though. I like about me. I think we 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 just heard what you like. <laughs> for Nintendo, I think they need to have physical games. Okay. Yeah, I do think so. And even, I, with, I don't, even with these trade-offs. Yeah, yeah, I do think that they they, they really value. Who's going to rip the Band-Aid on this first? Who's going to? What do you mean who's going to What company is going to say, yeah, we're going digital only? Forget it. Microsoft, probably? It might be Microsoft. Their Game Pass yeah. stuff is already like a half step. Right. And, I mean, you do make more money on a, yes! on a digital game. You make so much 
Well, you don't have to manufacture it. You don't have to give it. a cut to Target or whoever. It's yes. like, it's just mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my money. Um, okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. But Nintendo is very anti this kind of stuff. Like, we know. Right, right. Like they, are, they are very They're in tight to that retail ecosystem. They really like it, too. Yes. They like that kind of, they yeah. want to have this, like, physical thing. They yeah. want to have the shelf space. They want to have people in a Target buying, like, you know, Back to school supplies, walking by yeah, yeah. and seeing a Nintendo thing. They think they, there's value in that for them. They, we know that. I do I do like the physical aspect. And even now there's games where it's like, I'll go out of my way to buy it. You do. To buy it yeah. physical. You'd like to but have like a cartridge. I don't I totally like, understand. I don't like some of these half steps that have been happening now where mm. oh, you need to download this other stuff. So if yeah. that's what it's gonna be, then I I will also opt for the digital <gasps> only. I, I would be you? okay. Because yeah, I don't like that. That's you love stuff. And I'm not talking about like a day one patch or anything like that. Yeah. It's like, oh no, you got to download the like, actual game. Like sixty percent of the game you yeah. can download, and thirty percent is on. Yeah, the I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. like that. Yeah, it is kind of cumbersome. That's, an, that's annoying. It's very, very clunky experience for the for the consumer. I right. Think. Right. Um, okay. Well, here's All right, one that one thing. turned out to be not so hard. This one is is very similar to yours. Are okay. You ready? Would you rather have full backwards compatibility with Switch physical and digital games? But no classic NSO library at all. Why would that have to go? It's just gonna go. It's gonna. Why? Go. I don't know why, but it <laughs> what? is. Okay. It's gone. There's no NSO. There's no Virtual Console. Nothing. Or you keep your classic game library and the digital Switch games, but there are no physical Switch games at all. So it's digital only. Everything is uh. digital. So both things are digital. The Switch games are digital, and you you still get your digital yeah. Virtual Console. Yeah. I mean, I was playing devil's advocate about backwards compatibility because I do kind of feel like, again, it's like my Switch is not going anywhere. It is it's it is more convenient to just have everything on the system that right. I'm playing, but I don't, I don't plan, unlike you, I don't plan on throwing the Switch into a dumpster the day I get a Switch I'll too. I'll throw it in a dumpster. Just don't kidding. do that. I'm not gonna. I'm don't not. do that. I won't. I That's... won't. That's so mean. I won't. It, this thing, I actually like this thing. I Believe it or not. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay. Um... Doing the backwards, like passing on the backwards compatibility. Okay, so you don't care about the physical backwards compatibility. You want the virtual console and the, the I mean, as long as you have your digital Switch games, you're good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You? Yeah, me. I, I'm, I'm going to one-up you on this, on this next question because that's fine. easy. Let's just go to that. All right. All right, this, this is, some of this is wild. <laughs> Switch 2 is backwards compatible, okay. but only for select games where developers have put in extra effort to get them to run on the new hardware. So this is kind of like what happened on some of the old Xbox systems where it's like, well, it is backwards compatible, but it's not plug and play. Like the, the devs have to do some work to get it to, to get it up and running. But is Nintendo gonna do this own work? I'm pretty sure they'll. So at least the first party but, games but, are like a guarantee. But there may you always hear about like, well, this one game has this weird thing that we can't get working. Like, there's always some edge case. What that is, I don't know. Okay, which game we don't know. Okay. The other option, Switch Two is backwards compatible for digital games only. Yes. Nintendo introduces a system where owners of physical games can buy them digitally at a significant discount. We have to rebuy them. And I and I and I wrote down here. Roughly 75% discount. But we have to rebuy them? You do have to rebuy them. Oh, Nintendo. <laughs> but it's at a deep discount. You dumb me dirty, Nintendo. So this is, the second oh, scenario like is when the PSP Go came out. I remember that. I was very excited. I remember this. I was like, oh, maybe I'll get this. Because I was like, well, digital games, that's new. I did like the form factor of that. Yeah. But then I was like, wait, I have these UMDs. All the UMDs. How am I watching my Shrek UMD on the new PSP? And and yeah. they were really like, well, we're looking into a system where people can transfer their stuff. And ultimately they did nothing. Right. So So this is kind of like that. This is like this is like, well, we got digital solution. backwards compatibility figured out. We didn't want to deal with a physical slot. Yes. So you have you have to rebuy it, but we're throwing you an olive branch. It'll be cheap. It'll be fifteen dollars. Why do I have to rebuy it though? That's Why can't I just prove that I've already way. bought it? It's still a product. That product has value, and I you cannot, and you will pay for it. I cannot buy. <laughs> but but again, three more we're letting times. we're letting you choose. If you don't want it, your your one two switch, if you decide I don't want to play that again, you don't have to buy it. It's only the ones you want. Maybe I just buy nothing. It's only fine too. We are giving you choice. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they would say. That's exactly what they would say. 
That's why they would do it. <laughs> uh, I refuse. I don't know. I hate this option. I hate so, so with options. the first one, you're really rolling the dice. Yeah. Because it's like, is uh, is so and so dev going is, to is, do it? Is my copy of my my Witcher Three Switch version? Yeah. Is it? Will CD Projekt do the legwork? Are they like going to be busy, like whatever? They're going to be busy doing other important things. Right. So you don't know. You, I, you can I be think... confident Nintendo will do everything they can to get the first party stuff. Yeah. There. That's true. Which is what matters the most. It is what matters right? the most. It is what matters the most. They're going to make me buy Mario Kart 8 again, aren't they? I'm going to buy that <laughs> game like four times in this lifetime. <laughs> How much money have I spent on Mario Kart 8 at this so point? It's a lot. Like, has it cracked 200 bucks? It's a lot. Probably, right? Option what is your choice, two. though? Option 2. Option 2. Yeah. So will you rebuy it? Really? No, I won't rebuy it, but it's fine. Really? It's fine. Oh, wow. Maybe, like... I'll have like enough like my Nintendo points to like rebuy something or whatever. Hmm. But I don't know. I hate it. I hate it. I like the I like that choice. <laughs> I hate it. But Nintendo's totally gonna do this. They're totally I gonna like do that it. Choice. Okay, one more. We got one more a each. Yes. A little, here we go. A little uh, zany one here. Yeah, my, my last one is also the most out there. It's a little zany. Yeah. Okay. So if Nint if we're gonna get zany, if Nintendo gets zany, uh -huh. if they're like, oh shoot, to make this thing like Crazy feature proof. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta yeah. get gimmicky. Oh, we boy. gotta get Nintendo. Oh boy! They're gonna add a crazy feature. Would you rather have a dual screen Switch oh. Two, oh. or a Switch Two that can do like AR with like a camera and all sorts of random, you know, maybe it's like mixed reality AR stuff. So what is the form? The, is it is it a clamshell? Yeah, clamshell. Okay. What um, do you remember? When the Switch first came out, I, you, you, I almost took a picture of two Switches stacked, stacked together, together and like posted and, and it was like, oh look, it's the Switch, the, the, the three Switch DS or something. And you yeah. were like, do not post that. I told you, you were still working at Nintendo. <laughs> you're going to get fired. I was like, don't post, you're going to get fired. I think we still have the photos somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, it totally looked like a cookie. Right. If you yeah. could stack two Switches totally. just like edge to edge, it could be like a clamshell. That's obviously the choice. Is it really? I don't need any AR nonsense. Why what would I want that? those AR cards? Remember those AR no. cards? No. You can make a huge meme. No, that's terrible. Oh, I thought that was kind of That's fun. truly a gimmick versus something that is actually cool. This is cool. You have fat stacked switch with like a two So it doesn't have to be fat. It's going to be terrible. It's no fatter than a DS. It's not that fat. It's going to be a massive. I think it's great. It sounds awesome. It sounds terrible <laughs> to me. It sounds like really bad. It comes shows wrong. It's going to be like all heavy no, and No. No, it no, won't. It's going to be terrible. All right, whatever. It's fine. Last one here. All right, this one's, this one's a little bit long. In an effort to boost NSO subscriptions, <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> enters into a strategic relationship with Microsoft <gasps> to make Game Pass available on Switch 2. Due to hardware limitations, all games are played via Microsoft streaming technology only. Like cloud? And are available only to a higher cost tier. So what they have like okay. the deluxe tier now? It's, yeah. So we got a new tier, but you get everything that's on Game Pass. You can stream it. Ooh. And it's their streaming stuff, which actually is, works. is it works. It works and it's It good. works. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Or, in an effort to boost NSO subscriptions, <laughs> Nintendo creates a new higher cost subscription tier, which includes GameCube games. The platform is handled similarly to the current approach <sighs> no. on original Switch. <laughs> That's my reaction. <laughs> But I really, really like GameCube, like a lot. Okay, well, like, I know you but, can. But see, I can play GameCube. If I wanted to play, you know, it's, it's not so bad. GameCube is there, but it's the same kind of. Ugh, maybe you're it. getting a dozen games yeah. through the and, life and of this maybe thing. Maybe it's like good or bad. Right, like, you don't, you like don't know, games. and you might have to wait a long time to get yeah. something you want. I want the Game Pass. You'll take game, really, but I, you ha you have an Xbox. I know, and but, you have but, devices that will let you play true. streaming Game Pass stuff on it. That's true. It's all true. But I'll take the Game Pass. Wow. I, I just don't like that model for NSO. And if I wanted to play a GameCube game, I have my GameCube and those games. Okay. So I, I would be fine. And I don't actually play them. I just like to remember that I won't see them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. Okay. The nostalgia is Double Dash. through the memories. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not playing Double Dash like daily. What do they put uh, online multiplayer into Double Dash for your friends only? Friends only. I do like that. With weird backwards controls. <laughs> eh. 
Um, no, but the Game Pass, like, I feel like while I do have ways of playing those Game Pass games handheld, having it on Switch would be really nice. Like, some of those Game Pass games are, like, perfect. You might not need an Xbox anymore, then. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, again, we're going to talk in the news about what Xbox's big machinations might be. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. We might need it still for other things. But, yeah, like, if I could play some of those Game Pass Xbox games, like Pentiment, that's a perfect <laughs> Switch game. You're the one person I'm in the, the one world. Person playing I Pentiment. need to play Pentiment on I'll, my Switch too. I do, okay? Maybe there's a touch screen <laughs> sort of situation. Oh, no. Oh, that would be great calligraphy class. All right. This is what I'm into, guys. I don't know. Anyhow, what would you pick? What would I pick? Yeah. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm kind of all set with, I, I'm, I'm kind of lukewarm on either of these, honestly. You are? I, you're, you feel you're all set on Game, game yeah, Pass. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm set on both of these. I'm set on Game Pass. I have devices to play that on if I need to stream it. And I have a lot of GameCube games and a GameCube, and I'm feeling pretty okay about that. Mm -hmm. So, again, if, if I'm Nintendo, I think the Game Pass option is pretty... It's pretty... It's, pretty it's cool. a good business. It's pretty interesting. It's a business... It's a good, a good business, um, just like... Right. Thing for them. Right. Know, we because again, like with the, we've talked about like the GameCube games being this line of de delineation of like what is or isn't retro. Right. So you can remake those. And That's what I think. And they can and feel they are doing it now. And they'll with, feel modern. Yeah. So I think they have reasons for not jumping into the GameCube generation beyond just like whatever hardware mm -hmm. limitation they may have. Yeah, yeah. I think they may have bigger aspirations for some yeah, of those games. Exactly. So I, I think the Game Pass option is maybe more appealing to them. Okay. There yes. you go. We couldn't stop there. We asked our Patreon subscribers. We specifically asked them what are the nightmare scenarios for them. What are the things that they <laughs> they do not want to have happen yeah. with the Switch 2? We got some interesting stuff. Ninja11 says, I'm worried about the pack-in title slash that one tech demo game. Oh. The Wii nailed it with Wii Sports, the Wii U justified the gamepad with asymmetrical multiplayer in Nintendo Land, and what did the Switch do? Made us pay 60 bucks to milk a cow? Show off some cool rumble mechanics that, while cool, weren't integral to any games after 1-2 Switch. I really hope the pack-in title shows off this value proposition of the new console. Let me give you... So, so there was no pack-in with the Switch. I was going to say, reality check. I don't think there's going to be a pack-in with the Switch 2 right. either. Especially if it is just a continuation of, right. of, of the Switch concept. Yeah. There, there's no need for a pack-in because you, you know yeah. what this is. You know what this is. Yeah. But no, no more one, no more switch. The one two switch. Where oh, everybody one two mm. switch was like the last mm. straw. Is it? They, they make another. If there's another launch Is title it? for Switch Two, that's like one four switch or whatever. I swear to God. Horse for Smash. <laughs> Ali Alejandro <laughs> says, "I'll be disappointed if we get another system without any form of trophies or achievements. They add an extra layer of goals to games, and it feels great to get a platinum trophy." It's also a nice way to look back at games and remember certain moments based on the date, timestamp of earning the trophy. 3DS had a great alternative via the activity log. Ignoring technical differences, the ability to earn trophies and achievements is usually the deciding factor for me and always preferring to get third-party games on either the PS5 or Xbox over the Switch. You need achievement and trophies. I don't feel this way, but I'm interested, I'm interested to yeah. hear this perspective. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like trophies on Xbox and PS5. I always feel good when I get a trophy, but I'm not like the type of player to platinum a game. You know, like yeah. I'm not the, like going out of my way to like platinum this, a game to get trophies. This this was a comment that was shared by several people. Right. We got a, we got a lot of comments on this question. Yeah. More so than we often do people when we ask scared. a question. <laughs> and there the were some things like fearful. this that, that there were, there's like a lot of people were on this topic of, yeah. of trophies and achievements. I do like the idea of like, tracking your yeah. play Yeah, better. something definitely something better than what we've got now. Right, exactly. So yeah. that if, if trophies is a way to track your what you're doing a little bit more and, and show your friends and you know that kind of stuff that that's that's fun. I like that. Sharif Jackson says I would be disappointed if they started <laughs> over again with the virtual console. <laughs> the games that have already released should be available day oh, one Sharif. with the next ones released on a similar schedule. Sweetie. Sharif. If oh. <laughs> they do this again <laughs> I don't loins. think I can take it. Gird your loins, people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. This is the one where I just feel uh. like they don't feel the same way. Nintendo does not feel the same way about the as the players do on this. They just don't. <sighs> they have to have their act together with retro games. They're not going to. They have to. Please we cannot do this again. I can't do this again. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Okay. Solid State says, I would be disappointed if they went back to an LCD screen instead of keeping the OLED screen. It's a day and night difference that even people who don't care about the graphics or tech in their Switch can see, and it would be a shame to not at least have the option at launch. There are rumors going around about how they're going back to an LCD screen, which I think is ridiculous. Well, you know why? It's because you can sell it later. That can be your they big enhancement. They can't do that again. You can't just go back two steps back on the thing that you have to go one step forward. Sure no. you can. That's terrible. They better not do that. That's I mean, crazy. it's not great. But again, they need to keep this price down right away. They cannot go over whatever the number in their mind is. And if it if it takes something like this, I can see them doing it. I can't believe that. And then it's like, great, we can put out the Switch 2 OLED and people will love that. No, they won't. And it'll be a different color. The people with OLEDs, if there's not like a significant improvement, they're not going to buy it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's not true at all. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like trying to bluff them. You're trying to bluff them? I'm trying them? to convince myself. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. Okay, just, I'm de definitely going to buy it. <laughs> and finally, Paul Harris says, I really want them to avoid adding weird oh. gimmicks. Oh, they didn't even want the AR cards. no one will use past the first week of owning the console. Examples of this in the past were the 3DS AR cards and games. Amazing. They were a oh neat moment the first time you tried it, but I don't know anyone who considered that a useful feature. <laughs> Since these features probably add to the price of the console, I'd rather Nintendo put their resources somewhere else. This was another one that got a lot of similar but Paul, comments. Paul, you can have a giant Paul Harris me on the streets, and you can take a photo. On the streets. On the, you can take a photo of it with your Switch 2, and it'll be great. Yeah. No? All right. I really want to come up with a word that like means like this type of feature that is so quickly abandoned. Yeah, you need to beyond yeah, like the it, first there's, month. There is no word for it. There are a lot of features like this though that Nintendo, Nintendo likes and they to are famous and they are famous. They're for famous this. for it. Yes. And when they get a little desperate in terms of how to make things feel unique, yeah. their whole thing is how do we differentiate? They love the you know to like really focus on differentiation, and when they get a little desperate about how to do that against themselves and against their competition, they get, they do this. They do the gimmicky thing. Well, well they do also love to never give up an idea. They'd they like do. to read, so that could be a fun video for us in the future is like, what are the long lost gimmicks that Nintendo could Can re warm like up, throw in the microwave for a minute <laughs> and put into the Switch 2 and like, hey, look at this. Reincarnate that onto Switch That's, 2. I, we should write that down. That, okay, could, that could be fun. If you guys want us to do that video. Because that is the something comments. they often do. As well. And there's a lot. There's a lot of And sometimes those come out cool and sometimes it's like, yeah, this still isn't ready. Or this still does not. Or, or we still don't care. Or we still don't care. Yeah, people don't want this. Right. We didn't want it then, we don't want it now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Great. So until they announce wow. this thing, all we can do is <laughs> get ourselves tied let our, into Let our nuts. imagination run wild. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is fun though. It's fun to like think about it. And I agree. We should all well, I don't I don't know about you, all the scenarios that I put out there, I was like, this this could all happen. Yeah, mine none too. of this is none of this is so far flung. Exactly. That's the whole point of this, is that any of this is possible, but if they do it any of this wrong, or there's a combination of things that could be, you know, really detrimental yeah. to yeah. the success of this new thing. That's why we always talk about like transitioning is really hard. You have all these really important decisions that you need it's to true. be making. And if you have a misstep along the way, like it could be very detrimental. So let's just hope none of these bad things happen and we, we have a very smooth yeah. transition into the next console. That's why this is so hard. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <clears throat> All right, let's get into our Nintendo story time, which you <laughs> teased at the top, this cursed Donkey Kong event. So this happened in October, 2010. Mm -hmm. This was going to be an event for Donkey Kong Country Returns, for which I was the PR lead. Yes. And so this, at this point, the game had been announced. It was coming out, I think, the next month in November. And right. this was kind of the big Media. holiday, yeah. holiday well, game the big holiday for the game. Wii yes. uh, in 2010. So as we often do... We were planning to go to the East Coast and do a big media tour, but we would often at that time kind of anchor it by having a bigger event around the big tentpole game. So it's like, yeah, you know, come come to our suite. We'll show you, you know, a half dozen games, but also be sure to come to this thing 
where you can come play the big game and it'll be cool, it'll be a cool experience um, and you'll wanna check that out. That was, a, that was a format that we often did right. back then to, to get more attention on this, this big game that we had. And the big game usually got like a lot of, you know, like budget and yes. resources behind it. You know, we, we did this for all the big games, you know, and it, really the sort of these like preview type events that we were doing from a PR, from our comms team, just got like more and more extravagant. Mm -hmm. Like to the point where we were like, are we PR people or are we events people? Because they were getting to the point where it was yeah. just like ridiculous. And I think this, this era was especially, we were kind of in the midst of, you know, really focusing on putting together a media event that was so beyond like, hey, sit down on this couch and play this game before it comes out and like capture your gameplay and write an article. It was so beyond that. It was like, we got to have like some huge PR stunt. It's got to be like, you know, themed out. We got our own crazy. gimmicks. Yeah, it, it was all very, you know, very extravagant. And it, it was so much more than just like, here's a controller. Right. Play the game for an hour, see you later, you know? So the gimmick for this one was that we are going to take people into the jungle of the world of Donkey Kong and kind of like right in the middle of the venue there would be like a 10 foot high pile of real bananas. It's like 7,000 plus Right, it's like bananas. here is Donkey Kong's banana horde. Right. Right as you walk in, bam, wow. Which is yeah. funny because like this is before... Like, like YouTube. That's a very social <laughs> media YouTube, friendly yeah. concept. Like there was none of that then really. Yeah. But it's interesting that that was still what we... Landed on. There are some pictures of it. I was gonna we'll, say we'll put yeah. a put we'll put we'll a few put into this episode, but like here. there's not a lot. Like there would yeah, be if you did so this. Yeah, so it's so crazy that we spent so much time and energy and money right to put on these sort of like visually extravagant events. Like there's other events where there was like ice sculptures and yeah. crazy whatevers, but like it was all before people could take these like you know it was even before we had like cr like content creators. Yeah, we, we were just yeah. doing like purely like very sort of specific games media. Right. And all of that was very like written content. I mean, maybe they'll take some photographs to accompany their articles, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like anyone was doing like a vlog or right. any sort right. of video content for it. So it was interesting that we were so fixated on doing these like visually stunning events. Yes. So we had a cool idea. We had a lot of the kind of conceptual pieces in mm -hmm. place. Um, for me, the timing was not great because in like late September, right before this trip and this event was supposed to happen, I had a big vacation planned. So I was going to, I'm pretty sure I went to Italy that year. Inspired by Assassin's Creed, I, went right. to, I did my big tour of Italy. And, you know, I would come back and, you know, basically like the next week or, or like short, like maybe a week after I get back, I'd get on a plane, go to New York and do this event. So we did something that we called at Nintendo a delegation plan, which was if somebody's going on vacation, you come up with a list of everything that needs to get done, and you you know assign people to do it, and you yeah. talk to them in advance, and you make sure they know what it is and how to do it, and make sure they feel good about it, so that you know stuff keeps moving mm -hmm. while you're gone, and and ideally you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And I was definitely one of those people. I was like, I'm, I'm going on vacation. I'm not, I'm not looking you're going at. On an I'm not looking at any of this. Trip. You're right. Gonna, like, I'm not bringing my laptop. I'm yeah, not you're turning doing off whatever. Email, like, yes. See you later. <clears throat> I mean, there were there were people who didn't do that. Didn't do that. That was not good. <laughs> yes. Now I can't do that ever again. Right. But that's fine. Anyways, um, but yes, yes, yeah. You you would have people that could back you up while you were on vacation, so you could take a proper vacation. Right. Yeah. So I had a, a pretty long one, but in the case of this event, um, we always had a support person working with us on these projects. So that person was in charge of, you know, the majority of this event while I was gone. And, and you know, again, we had a pretty long list of things for them to, to oversee. And, you know, we had our agency very involved and, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're extremely on top of things. So I was never worried about them um, taking clear, care of business. To be clear, that person was not me. It no, was this not, person was not you. It was not me. No, it was somebody else. Um, and so I go on the vacation, have a great time, come back. That first day back after a long vacation is always dicey. Yeah. This is why you... I had the you used to idea. You used to cry 
at the end of your vacations, you I told do. me. Yeah, I would cry on like, the last day. Tell me why. Because it was terrible to come back and you would you just know that it's gonna be that re-entry is gonna be <laughs> so hard. Because you would be just like flooded with I mean your inbox. It yeah, would, would be you might have thousands of emails. Thousands. It was literally thousands of And people of would emails. expect you to be ex on, on top, top of, of it. Like, caught up. Did you read my email? <laughs> yeah, and people would expect you to like on your first day back, right. like deliver stuff. Just jump right in. And I couldn't do that. Like you never no left. one could because yeah. that's it's impossible. impossible. Right. So I would cry. And then and then I <laughs> later on when I decided that this was like just ridiculous and a ridiculous expectation, I would just delete all the emails yes. while I was I may gone. have did I give you this idea? Because I, I, so. I was you know, there's so many and like ninety five percent of them are just junk. Yeah. And if there's anything that's truly important, someone will resend it to you. Someone will take you aside and sit you down, or they'll resend it. Yeah. You don't need to like, oh, what's this? What's this? What's exactly. this? Exactly. It's like just, just that, get then, rid of it. And then I was like, this is a, this is a life changing. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> so I would just do that. I would come back and I would hit like select all, and I would delete it, and I would send an email out to like my team, and say, and, and that says like, hey, I'm back. Uh, if you have something important to tell me, my door is open. And then they would come, right. so, someone so, will come and tell me, whatever. So for you and I, for example, when you would come back, I would have a meeting with you. And yeah. it's like the catch-up meeting. It's yeah. like, let me tell you what happened Yeah, and then let me give, give you gone. the highlights. Right. And then you can, here are the three important things for you to like catch up on today. Exactly. Like, great. At that point in 2010, we were all dumber and, and we nobody was We were very dumb this. and I was still crying. It was, so, <laughs> yeah, I was crying every day. Always crying, yes. I was crying daily. And yes. you were on vacation. You came back to 3,000 emails. Yes. And, more than bananas. Right, so I was gone, I was gone for two weeks. And in a week's time, I was getting on this plane to go do this event. So, you know, I scheduled meetings with most of these people to get caught up. Yeah. And I scheduled a meeting with this person because um, I was like, gosh, this, this event was like the big thing. Yeah. It's urgent and, and needed to get taken care of. And it so, was the next week. So I need to get, I, yeah, I need to know what's, what's happening with this. So that was like one of the first meetings that I had. So I sit down and say, hey, so uh, how'd it go with all that stuff? How are we looking? And they go, well... I couldn't really get to any of it. <laughs> and I go, oh? <laughs> yeah, I got a little sidetracked with some other things and some stuff popped up and you know, I just I just couldn't get to any of it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh boy, wow, all I right. I just, <laughs> <laughs> the, the other thing that was like really just a head scratcher for me on that, in that <laughs> situation is that like you said, our agency. Yes. Very involved. Very on Well, they, of it. they did what they needed to do. But there's a limit to what That's they can true. do. That's so true. there is a lot they, of They were doing stuff like booking the appointments, right, right. getting the media list done, exactly. like writing the embargo. They were in charge of getting those bananas too. They had those bananas. They had the bananas. Yeah. Oh, they had the bananas? <laughs> I think that. Are you sure? Well, there may have been there may have been some other I feel like I was doing some banana management <laughs> to help you out. I mean, let's okay, keep okay, going. Okay, fine. Um so I'm just kind of like dumbfounded by this of like, you did nothing? Like literally nothing? It's like, yeah, you know, this, this, there, there were fires left and right. I had other stuff I had to, I think just forgot. I had to tend to. It's like, did maybe, this person forget? maybe you just forgot. I don't know. There were a lot of excuses. There was, there was some problems. Yeah. And it was sure. like, yeah. And I have this other thing that I need to tend to. So I'm kind of noping out of this whole project now. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> oh boy. So this is like a real crisis situation here because this thing's happening one way or another right. so I better I better hunker there. down and and figure something out so of course I turned to you of course yes and you had some role of getting 7,000 bananas uh, yeah I remember you came back it was like that it was the day you came back yeah because we had remember, like five days to figure it out I remember yeah you had the meeting in the morning and then the next meeting you had was with me and you're like so <laughs> we have a situation where we need to do this event, right. and so and so has basically done none of the the, the event planning. It was a stuff. dereliction of duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like I said, like it was kind of funny that our role as PR people were not really traditional PR <laughs> roles. Get like seven thousand bananas. We weren't really doing like a lot of the media relations. Like right. that was the agency, but we had to do a lot of like event planning, which was not something. I didn't love that. That you know. A, that we had like innate expertise. Yeah. We, it was something, something that we had to learn. And I, I was like, I generally liked event planning and I liked doing that stuff. So I was like quick to pick it up. 
But I mean, Nintendo has a fantastic events team. Yes. They continue to be just like amazing. Um, and they would help us with these events and they would also do like other events like E3 and PAX mm -hmm. and stuff. But they would they would do these like smaller PR media events because they know that there was value in that. So a lot of it was like project planning with this other team to help you like yeah. physically mm -hmm. get, you know, pre-launch consoles to an event space so they can play the games. You have to get all these people um, from our like product testing team to help like secure all your hardware. It was a lot of processy things like that. This one had a little wrinkle on it because we had to like deck out the whole space to look like a jungle and somehow transport 7,000 bananas to a venue in New York City. And all of our staff was on the West Coast. Right. So it was, the, I mean, just the logistics of like, how do you drive 7,000? Or like, how do you do that? It was like very challenging. And what do you do with it? I remember we did find like, oh, they're going to this like food bank they afterwards. They went to a food bank, yeah. Right. I remember like that. They we did, had to donate they it They didn't afterwards. just get like dumped no, into the Hudson River. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, that's bad PR. <laughs> you don't want that headline. Nintendo dumped 7,000 right. bananas into the Hudson River um, for some like PR gimmick. Yeah, so like one week is the time that we had yeah. to do all of it. And thank goodness our events team was so good because they could have been like, we can't, they could have easily told right. us, we can't, can't, can't do, do this, it. sorry, you're, you're, you're on your you're own. You're out of luck, you gotta cancel We have other, we have something. other right. events that we gotta yeah. do. They and our, and our PR agency are there truly like ride or die. They figured it out. It was No amazing. problem, like it was very hairy, it but they hairy. figured it out. It was it, expensive. It, yeah, there were it some things we had to pay more for, but expensive. it was fine. Yeah, we went way over budget on that event, but we always put in a contingency in the right. budget. Right, right, just used in case. every penny. I remember right. we used every single penny on right. freight on freight charges. For we bananas. Had, before, we had to, um, those days, we had to bring, like, they're, they're called, like, interactive. Yes. It's basically, like, this giant cabinet. With a TV with built a into TV it. With a TV built in, controllers. The Wii was, like, lock and keyed. It's like a custom-made It was a security thing. thing. Yeah. And then you would have to have people fly out with physical pre-launch yeah, discs. right. Um, that they would, and they would, they would go to this place called the Burn Room, where you would have to get Treehouse to, like, play your demo, play up to that part of the game mm -hmm. that you're going to demo. So they had to do the, all of this in get a week. Get save data. Get the save data done. Stuff. And then they burn it onto the discs. And that person would physically travel yeah. out to this event and, like, put into the discs, into the interactive, lock it up, you know. And, and then on top of that, we had to get the bananas and we had to, like, deck out the entire space to look like a jungle. Yes. It was insane. It was insane. I don't know how we did it. So I, I ironically got taken to task for um, being a, a bad delegation planner That's after true. that. You did. It's like it's, it's my fault that trouble. nothing happened, that <laughs> I had the delegation plan. I yeah. gave it to this person. I took them through it, and then nothing happened, but this is my fault? Yeah, you because you were the lead. It always, that, that stayed with me. Every time I took a vacation That's after that, I was like, you know, you really need to have a tight delegate. It needs to be airtight, watertight. Yeah. Make it tight. <laughs> Higher the better. Yes, I know. And this then, one thing happened once. That's so true because it really did sit with you for like years. Like, a class, like hung over me like, oh, Kit's bad at these delegation plans. He doesn't yes. care about them. And then it was like, oh, before you went on vacation, like weeks What's before. The deal? So like you would have a vacation plan in like October, right? Yeah. And like in like August, your boss would be like, where's delegation? Yeah. <laughs> Come so on. Three months away, like two months away. It's like. <laughs> I mean, how can I, what more could yeah. I have done here? Don't take the vacation. That's the lesson. Never take the vacation. You better be making those phone calls from Italy. <laughs> yeah. Do not take the vacation. Buongiorno. Are you done with those bananas? <laughs> like, yeah, it, it was, it, it really did like become this yeah. thing. Like you, you had this like reputation, but it, it made no sense at all because it wasn't your fault. Unfair. It was so unfair. unfair. Oh no. my gosh. So that's Anyways, a ridiculous yes. story. The event was great in the end. The event was the great. Yes. I didn't go to it, but the event was great. The event was great. Yes. People loved it. Okay, we uh, are almost going to get into our discussion of Prince of Persia and the Lost Crown, which you finished, and yes. all the other games that we are playing. But first, we have one more sponsor to shout out. This episode is sponsored by Notion. Notion is an incredible tool that simplifies your workflow by unifying everything you need to be your productive best. Yes, you might think that this podcast just wave a magic huh. wand, and it just it just happens. You know, this episode just appears in front of you, and it's perfect and beautiful but no we actually do a lot of work yes in the you know the week prior planning for each episode we talk about it we have a lot of different notes 
a lot of different docs. Yes. We have so There's many news things. stories we got to get. We got to log yes. questions from our Patreon subscribers. It's all got to come it's together into something that we together. can we can both share. Yeah. And Notion makes it so easy. Right. Something that is so great about it is that it is not just a collection of one-off apps, mm -hmm. it is all fully integrated. Exactly. So it is all, whatever you're doing, you can do it all in one place, mm -hmm. especially between the two of us. There's yeah. no confusion of like, oh, is this in this place or is this in that one? Exactly. I don't know. It's like, it's just there. And it combines it all for you in this beautifully designed thing. And then we use that to do this. Right. So, you know, you there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that you might be doing um, work that you're doing, even personal things that you're doing, you know, Notion can really help you organize all of that. Yes, there's also the fully integrated Notion AI assistant that helps you work faster and think bigger, doing tasks that normally take you hours in just seconds. Yes. And it's used by over half of Fortune 500 companies, but I gotta say, it's also great for small businesses like us. Fortune or 100 even, companies. Or just, you're just a person. Yeah. A single person who wants yeah. to get stuff done. Get your life all Get things organized. in order. Exactly. You're the master of organization. It I is am. true. Notion's helping me with that. Yes. <laughs> so try Notion for free when you go to notion.com slash kit and Krista. That's all lowercase letters. Notion.com slash kit and Krista to try the powerful, easy to use Notion AI assistant today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. Notion.com slash kit and Krista. We'll put the link right over here and also in the description below. All right, let's get into this discussion of the Prince of or Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Yes. You finished it, I have not. I have finished it, yes. The game is, the game had an early access launch There's an early earlier access, this demo, week. There was but, a demo available. But I think it's just out now. It's out now, yes, it's so, out now. So, big final thoughts from you. Yeah, so, you know, we definitely showed off some of the gameplay during our, like, impressions Let's Play video. Yes. Um, and at that point, I was about like halfway through about. And since then, you know, the whole point of this game is obviously like you are um, like doing all of this stuff to like save the prince. And while you're going through, you're collecting these like feathers to get these different powers. And right. As you get the powers, very similar to a Metroid game, you go back and like, you know, like redo areas or it unlocks different areas and things like that so at the time of our like let's play recording i was about like half of the powers so you get the rest of the powers like pretty soon afterwards mm. and then you kind of have to like you know really go through the game with all of your abilities like you have to kind of combine a lot of your abilities to get through it to get through the platforming to get through some of the puzzles to get through the boss fights I thought that was pretty good because I kind of don't like it when games are like games like this where they have a progression of you picking up power ups and then like you get the last one and the game ends. Oh, you know, like I don't like oh, that. So you so you get them all and then there's a good chunk of you just using them. Yeah. So I just got the double jump. How many more do I have? I think you have two more. All right. Yeah. Um, kind of late to get a double jump in a game like this. I was I would say. To the point where in our video, you were like, is there a double jump? I know, I didn't know that if there was one or yeah. not. But yeah, I, I think that it makes sense because they want you to not get to those areas in the very beginning. Yeah. If you had a double jump, you could like easily get right. to them. Yeah, I had a suspicion that there was another sort of power because I keep seeing these little like, they look like little like triangles. Oh, I've seen Have those, yeah. Have you seen yeah. those little triangles? Did you find things? out what those are? You get a power up for it. Okay. I was like, what is this thing? This yeah, looks like yeah. something I need later. Um, so yeah, the, the game sort of becomes like very open, right? After you get all the power-ups, then you know like, okay, everywhere I haven't been able to go before, I can go to those places now. I have everything I need to do this. Yeah. Um, and it gets pretty tough. Like This game this game is challenging. That that's definitely one of my big takeaways. Yeah. Where multiple enemies are truly life-threatening. If you if you're fighting like three enemies at once, like they can just wipe you out. Yes. The bosses the bosses are very good, but also tough. Tough. Yeah. And there's also, you know, beyond uh, on paper, it's like it's an easy comparison. Like, oh, it's a Metroid game. It's a Metroidvania game, but this also has like some very precision platforming, which yeah. I saw our friend Janet Garcia comparing it to Celeste, which I think is a great comparison, That's a where you have comparison. that dash jump. Yes. Like there's a lot of, of sequences where you're going through a tight space where there's like spikes. spikes. And it's mm -hmm. like you need to perfectly navigate that. That's different from a Metroid game. Yeah. 
And then there's also this aspect of puzzles that Metroid kind of doesn't have to the same That's degree. That's the thing too. that I think is the most unique is the addition of puzzles integrated in precision platforms. Because mm. there are some areas, and I, I know you've you've done one, yeah. where it is like a very challenging like Zelda dungeon, traditional Zelda dungeon type puzzle. But at the same time, you have to, you are expected to do all of that precision platforming. Yeah. And you have to think about what are the skills that you have that you need to use to your disposal. Yeah. And that was like a three-tiered kind of like brain yeah, thing because that you'd I was be like, doing. okay, I know what I need to do, but can I actually pull it off? Yeah. Is a real thing. That puzzle in particular had a countdown clock as right. well. Right. So I was just like, oh, I, I am. That one took me a little while. I that am last one of those. In it. Took like, me I don't a think I blinked for like 30 minutes. This is how it hurt my hand. Um, but yeah, it, but once you do it, when, and when you like nail the platforming, it, it feels yeah. really good. I didn't get frustrated with those. No, I didn't. As, as I often can in a, in a puzzle situation. And also, the, the good thing about this game is when I fail at the platforming, it brings you back pretty quick. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't make you go all the way right. back. You don't have to do like whole chunks over and mm -hmm. over. It kind of brings you back to like right where you maybe failed. Yeah. And then you can easily kind of try again and again and again. Um, almost like a Cuphead game, you know, yeah. where it brings yeah. you back pretty, right. pretty quick. Right. So I like that. Um, some complaints, little nits really, is... I do find like some of the areas to be like a little huge. I think so too. And I was getting a little like confused and lost. So the, um, the thing that compounds that with me is I don't think there's enough fast travel points. Yeah, yeah. So I think that hurts my desire to just explore, explore because right. it's like I could get stuck and have to backtrack kind of far if I, if I don't actually have the ability to right. progress. So it's you, you might think like, oh yeah, I want a bigger world to explore mm -hmm. but in this case it's like mm, I, might, I might have wanted it to be like yeah. maybe 25 percent smaller right the one thing i did like was they do make it generally accessible for you to get a map like you talked about oh we right talked about little boy. Some, sometimes i think that's a girl <laughs> i think she, oh, oops. but i think um they are sometimes hidden like yeah. there are some areas where i've it's like, oh, they're somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. Where you can just buy a map from them. Yeah, you can buy a map from them, but it is kind of like Metroid in that way, where you yeah. have to like go somewhere to get a map. Right. Or else, and then and then it like gives you like the unhighlighted areas that yeah. you haven't seen. So that helped a little bit with the bigness, the mm -hmm. largeness of, um, of some of the areas, uh, but. It was it was tough. I think it was it did hinder my desire to explore as well. Sometimes I just go like completely the wrong way, go through some really tough. Yeah, that happened to me. Platforming a things, of and times. then have to reverse. Yeah. Oh, I'm, really I'm actually tough. not supposed to be here right now. Platforming things, yeah, and yeah. then you're like, oh, I just wasted a lot of time, and I have to probably redo this again. Like, later. Yeah. So there's fast travel points, but there's also save points, and there's yeah. a lot of save points. Yeah. And I'm like, why didn't they just make that the fast, the fast travel? travel. That's kind of maybe weird. that makes it too too easy. Easy. I don't, I, I would have preferred that honestly. Right. The other thing is, this is a game design knit, is like, there are some areas where you just like can't do that puzzle if you don't have all of the abilities. Uh. Like I did run into that like once or twice. And maybe it's just my inability to platform that in the way that they want me to. Like I, mm. I couldn't do it. And because so, you didn't have an ability? Well, I feel like maybe I should have been able to do it, but maybe I was just bad at it. Oh. But I, I had to like leave an area, go and get the ability, come back, and then and then like redo it. Okay. It was really weird too. That particular area, there was like two three things that you had to do. Okay. I did two out of the three things. The, oh. On the third thing, I felt like I could have done the same thing that I was doing to do to solve the first two things, but I could not. Yeah, it should be clear if it's a case of I don't have the ability or I just I'm doing I, I'm, I'm, mess, wrong. I'm messing up. Yeah. And if you're in that in between where you don't know, that's that, not that's that not was good. what it was. Yeah. And I, I I'm so, you know, this is one of those things where I kinda laughed to myself where if it was a game that I was playing at launch, I would have just looked at a walkthrough. And I had like the Nintendo 
Back when we were at yeah. Nintendo, we'd get these games two weeks early, right, right? Right, And we would play it without any help. Sometimes I'll call Treehouse, though. I'd be like, can you help me? Yeah. Um, I had no Treehouse to call. I had nobody to call. I haven't called you yet for this game. You called me once. Oh, I called you once. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but I, didn't, I called no one. And I, you know, I was getting kind of frustrated in that, in those areas where I wasn't sure if, did I need something else to do this? Or am I just doing this wrong? Um, so I'm excited to watch the walkthrough of that part to see how other people yeah. do it. But that, that was that's my only two things. In general, I thought this game was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Um, we, we showed it off in the video. This game does have some very flexible difficulty yeah. sliders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You and can kind of turn on and off as you right. need. So like you can adjust the enemy. If there's like a boss, for, if you're having trouble with the bosses, for example, you can yeah. make it slightly easier. Or there's even like a platforming assist, which I, ha I haven't tried that yet. I refuse to use it. But it, it always tells me though. It's fine. I fail. If you want to like, use it. I fail so much. It's like always like, do you need to use the assist? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's fine if you want. But you need to if you need to use this, no shame. Yeah, I just have yeah. like a personal, you know. But I like that. It's, I mean, if if it's a question of like, am I going to stop playing this game now because I can't do this thing? It's good that those options are there. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, but overall, I I thought the game was so so good. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really just like. It was. It met all my expectations. It was one of our our most anticipated games it, of correct. 2024, correct. and I totally met. And exceeded my expectations. So, one of the questions that I've started to think about, and I haven't finished it, so I can't answer it myself, is: Is this game better than Metroid Dread? I like puzzles, and I like the combination of precision platform. Yeah, and it does puzzles. have some stuff that Metroid doesn't have to the same degree. Right. Yeah. But it's so it is similar, but also different in many ways. You know, Metroid Dread has like that thing that is very that we talk about a lot. That I think is just. The vibe of Metroid. This is a different, obviously, a very different yeah. vibe. Um, but gameplay wise, I, I will say that I think I like the gameplay more than Metroid Dread. Because mm. I, I, again, I like the combination yeah. of exploration and retroversing and puzzles. And I have also seen now that the, the game is more out, like some people doing crazy, like combat combo videos, oh, man, it's which I, I didn't know you could do that in that yeah. way of like, oh, I've really been like, Sandbagging the combat. Oh really? Oh, yeah. I love the comp. Like some of the like the the um like some of those the smaller enemies, not even the bosses, but like smaller enemies. I feel like it's almost like playing Smash. Mm. Like you can do like a crazy like yeah. up, up B kind of attack. Right, right. You can do a lot of like air dashing kind of stuff. Like it kind of reminds me like some sometimes when you're looking at it, it's like the levels look oh, like a yeah. Smash stage. Yeah, and you can. Oh, get this would be this would be a good Smash character actually. Oh yes, yeah. make Sargon a I mean, Smash he, he character. He does kind of play like a Smash character, yeah. Oh, that would man, that would be so cool. And then he can have like final smashes with all his power ups, right, his right. charges and stuff. That could be cool. Oh, put that in Smash. Anyways, but yeah, it does feel it kind of feels like a proper fighting game in those yeah. combat things, and it, it feels good. It feels really good. Yeah. I like Again, it a lot. I'm not far enough to say. I do think Metroid Dread is a more polished game. Mm -hmm. Where again, there's just like occasionally you'll find something that's like a rough edge in, yeah. in Prince of Persia. It's like, mm, that's like they they figure that stuff out in Metroid or even like I think I think like for example the running animation I think is kind of bad. It's a little in, slow in this, compared to what he's actually doing when he's attacking. It's like it just doesn't look very smooth. Where it's yeah. like yeah, like Metroid is like so polished down right, to every right. degree. And like you know, she has a th that thing where she can go into the ball too. Right. right? So, so it that, just like that sort of transition right. is very smooth. So so maybe it's a harder comparison. Like maybe it's a bad comparison even, but it's one that I keep thinking of. Yeah. Because these games keep getting brought up together. Right. And right. and yes, yeah, like Prince of Persia just has some stuff that that Metroid Dread does, doesn't have. Doesn't yeah. have. Yeah. And if you like that kind of stuff, like you like the puzzles, right? Then you you will really like this game. But if you don't like it yeah. and you want it to be very like you know, platforming, combat focused, and like very, you know, not precise and not not like precision platforming, but very combat yeah. focused. Yeah, but, e but I mean, either way, they're both like super high-end games. Totally. Um, yeah, great game. I have seen a lot of people saying like, hey, this game looks great. I'll buy it when it goes on sale in a month. Uh, I know. Ubisoft really has this reputation where like yeah. all their stuff goes on sale. I know, right, I right. get that. Um, yeah, so I mean, you I, can if you don't ha want to play it right, right away. I, I maybe am slightly concerned about the eventual welfare of this game sales-wise, if that's the Aww. if people are not, like, clamoring, like, I need to get this, you know, day one. Yeah. But. I think it's worth it it's day a, one. It, it is a, 
It is a great game. I, I think, think it's, it's only fifty dollars. Yeah, um, I think it's the a base great game. game. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very worth fifty dollars. And it's you know early in the year. You know maybe you don't yeah. have as many games to play right now. So this is a good this is a good one to start the year yeah. with. Truly a, an amazing like just re invigoration of the franchise, I guess, because mm -hmm. we've been all, I've, I've personally been clamoring for a Prince of Persia game for so long. Oh. There's like all these videos that we did back then, and I was like, when are we going to get another uh, one of these? Yeah, and like, yeah. it's so fun to, to see it come back and really come back in a, a great way. So, okay. Yeah. And then or you went, Ubisoft. And then you went straight back to Assassin's Creed Mirage. I'm in my Ubisoft era right now. Um, it's good. I mean, they had kind of a great. slow year last year. They did, yeah. And I, I sort of backburnered um, Assassin's Creed for us and other games last year, so I'm glad to be getting back to it. Yeah, yeah. I have, I've gone straight back to Mirage. Um, like I said before, you know, this game is not trying to do anything, like, super out there. It is such, like, a Assassin's Creed game to its very core. Like, all of the things that you do, that you probably love to do in Assassin's Creed games are in this game, and it's done well. Um... I did have a moment where I was like, oh no, is it going to be annoying? Where I had to eavesdrop <laughs> uh. on somebody. But they were standing still. And also, it was very forgiving in terms of like where I could be to do that. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't annoyed, thank goodness. Because I know we were both complaining. Like, yeah. If it's going to be like this thing where it just like desyncs you immediately, that's going to be annoying. Um, but yeah, I, I have... Um, you know, really enjoy kind of going back to this, like, core Assassin's Creed formula, and I really like just, like, those very typical, satisfying Assassin's Creed things that I do in these games, which is, like, getting the eagle points and doing these really, like, stealth-based missions and the story and the location and all that stuff. And, like, it, it always hits when you, like, you know, do your leap of faith into a bale of hay. Like, it just feels good, you know? I, I just like it. I don't know. I don't care that it's not revolutionizing anything. Yeah. Like I just, I just like it. So Good. Yeah, I like it so far. Nice. One of the reasons I'm a little further behind you in Prince of Persia is that I was getting near the end of Cyberpunk, the DLC, the Phantom Liberty DLC, and mm -hmm. wanted to wrap that up. So I was doing double duty on those, but I did finally finish it. Oh boy! <laughs> and it was great. And as I've been saying, it was there's a lot of game there. Like that was about fifteen hours for me and there was a lot of other side stuff that I didn't really get too into so yeah. that that's a significant DLC for this game. I did have this interesting thing happen where depending on your there's like so many branching paths based on decisions you make and this DLC is very much of like there are these two key characters and which one are you going to side with oh. in a lot of the decisions. And I found out that based on the decisions and the character that I decided to side with... The ending was different? The ending scenario that I had was very different from what it would have been the other way. Oh. So the other way, it looks like... And I watched a lot of this on YouTube because I was just so curious. Uh -huh. It looks like a much more traditional, action-oriented like shootout. Okay. Whereas the version that I did got... It was, it was like a little mini like horror game where you go down into this old like military bunker and this person you're pursuing like jacks in to the security system and it's like we've activated this terrifying security robot <gasps> that is going to Like hunt. an Emmy? Yes, it's li literally basically and and literally basically an Emmy. I hate Emmys. And They're so scary. It is going They're like to the scariest thing ever. It is going to stalk you <gasps> through this like abandoned facility. Oh my gosh. Where the lights are off oh. and you don't know where stuff is. Yikes. And you basically need to deactivate all these systems while this is happening, while you are getting chased by this scary robot. I don't like that at all. And it's one of those things where, like, you'll jet. A lot of it's like you have to go into like the terminal and do this mini game to deactivate this thing. Like, but you're waiting. But for you it might to come up you behind. might jack in and like you can hear the footsteps coming, or you'll feel it in the control. It's like, well, I better jack out and hide. And no. At first, I was really frustrated because I was like, you can't attack this thing; it's invincible. And if it sees you, you're basically dead. But I did find out like. Its cone of vision is not that big, so if you're able to hide with enough time, with because you 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 get a good warning that it's coming. So you hide and wait for it to come by. You hide, and then there's a sound effect where it's like, all right, it's gone. 
and the and game and the game always auto saves then. So and then I would get back to it. But that mini game, I was not very good at it. So sometimes it took me like four or five tries to get it right to, to finish the mini game. But I eventually got through it. But I was like, oh, this is really, is really stressful. Aww. And this is may, maybe not my ideal cyberpunk gameplay experience. Like this is not a game that I would normally play. This kind right. of like the deep horror. It's also That's like so I'm in this like I've never been in this facility before. Like it all kind of looks the same. So like is like, it through this door, or through that door? Yeah, you're just wandering around. Like, I just gotta get through this. Oh my god! <laughs> but I finally did, and there are multiple endings. Um, the ending that I got, um, oh. I you, I wouldn't say that any of them are the bad ending. Yeah. Because they're all like fully fleshed out situations. I'd say that mine was more towards the bad ending side of the spectrum in terms of just the outcome for some of these characters. Oh, no. Uh, but I, I watched all the other endings, and, and they're all gradations okay. of that. Yeah, yeah. But they did a great job with it. Like, they did. They had a lot of, like, flashbacks happening, so you could see, like, how did this person get in this scenario where you were helping them, and, like, how did they become, like, this tool for the government... Uh, for both of them, actually, these two characters who are very intertwined, Idris Elba and this other character. Right. And I, I, came, I became quite attached to the, the other character. Also okay. quite hot, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just so happens. Just so happens just to be a, a hottie. Just a coincidence. Okay, another hottie to add to 2024. <laughs> yes. Good. Uh, although this, game two... came, this came out in 2023. Oh, darn, so you yes, can't add Yes, so it doesn't it. count. So Sargon is the only it one. It do does not count, no. Sargon is yes. the only one. Yes. But... So now I'm back in the in the base game, and I do want to finish my playthrough of that. I probably have like eight-ish hours to go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish Prince of Persia, go back to Cyberpunk, and by the time that's done, Yakuza will be just about ready to come out. That's my I big. I am so. That's my big master plan about Yakuza. Then I saw like, oh, there's a new trailer for Final Fantasy VII that came out, yeah. and it's like. The walls are closing in <laughs> because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have Yakuza finished oh, Yakuza is so long. by the time yeah. Final Fantasy oh, comes out. No so maybe you can maybe you can do that switcheroo. But, but you want to play Yakuza? You're the Final Fantasy VII fan here. That's true. I, I definitely have to. Play you can't. Final you're not gonna be able to wait on that. I can't wait. Yeah. But I also want to play Yakuza. What do you? Badly. Well, what are you gonna do? Never sleep again. What are you again. gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> Never sleep again. All right. Um, but yes, we are going to be. Jumping right back into our busy game schedule, but we've been playing some great games so far yes, in the beginning. It's been very nice so, so far. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get into some news. Kind of a lot of news. Today. There, yes, we 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 made a, a plea last week for more news, and we got it. Yeah. Our wishes were answered. I guess so. And it's funny because I think last week we took a Q and A question about Nintendo Selects, and yes. now there's this story that's got people talking about Nintendo Selects. So people have found out. I don't know how people find this out, by the way. People are very yeah, plugged into this. People are very plugged But people have found out that there is, wow, this, how many games is this? This is like 15 games, mm -hmm. first yeah, party yeah. games, yeah. that are starting to go out of stock, Switch games. They're starting to go out of stock at multiple retailers. And it's got some heavy hitters. It's got like um, Mario Odyssey. Zelda Link Awakening. Uh, yeah, Link's Awakening, Patrick Tropical Red. Freeze. Both uh, fire, both Fire Emblem mm -hmm. games on Switch, so yeah. it's a it's a big list, and people are wondering like, what does this mean? You know, some people are saying, could it be Nintendo Selects, some sort of announcement for that? Could it be something where these games are getting reprinted with re some sort of with some sort of indication plays on Switch One and Switch Two? Yeah, it could be. Th Last week. We did say that we think Nintendo Selects is unlikely. I think it's unlikely, too. This is definitely the type of thing that they would do mm -hmm. leading up to Nintendo Selects. Let's clear yeah. out these games so that we can get the new versions out there. The only thing that gives me pause, though, is like this is a lot of games. Yeah. And this is maybe more than I would expect them to do. All at once. All at once. Exactly. Also, Breath of the Wild is not on this list. Which, of course, makes sense for our inevitable two-pack that we That's right. have the, predicted. The, the, the DX two-pack. You don't need a Nintendo Select of Breath of the Wild. We can just buy it again. With, you can buy it again with, with, with Tears of the Tears Kingdom. Of the Kingdom right. With a little bit of up yes. and some little exactly. bells and whistles. Exactly. I think this is going to be a reprint. What do you mean a reprint? Like, they're just going to reprint the games with, like, available on for, the... For the new system. Yeah. Right. 
Because okay. they don't want people to be confused that these games don't want. So why do why do this now? This is very early to be doing this. It's not that early. But you haven't even you gotta reprint haven't it. even announced the thing. They're gonna need some time to get this stuff off. Physical okay. games, you gotta take it all off. All right. This bodes well for backwards compatibility, though. So sticker, you can just put a sticker on it. A it's stick, a stickering we campaign. We had a whole stickering thing. The sticker that was so annoying. The stick, no, people, nobody loves the stickers. Nobody wants that. It's, it's a lot of work to it's put a, a lot of work to put a sticker on it's something. It's way it turns more work out. than you think it yeah, is. Stickering, yeah. um, but yeah, if they want to reprint this, reprint the covers. Yeah. You know, pull yeah. them all, reprint the covers so that right. it has like some sort of branding on it. You know, mm -hmm. and then put it back on the shelf. Yeah, you need you need a couple months, right? To do so all that you that. can pay your fifteen dollars to get it to work to run on your Switch too, right? Oh my gosh, <laughs> don't do that. Seventy five percent off, really? Yeah, yeah, but this is this is suspicious. Yes, props to the people who put Good the job, pieces guys. together yeah. on this. There's definitely something yeah. afoot, but it's it's tough to know exactly what afoot. Yes. CES happened. It came and went. There was some weird stuff that happened <laughs> at CES. Including AARP Mario. AARP. That, that is one where I've read people trying to explain that, and I just don't, I don't understand, understand it. There's like too how many, it happened, I don't understand. There's too many people in groups tangled up in that, and I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm, no I'm just out. out. I'm out. It's just yeah. too weird. It's very And strange. then there was the thing about that company, you know, saying that they knew the Switch to date. Yeah, and then they were like, we're just speculating. Which seems it's not like, to be the case, though? and they vanished. But there was just a lot of heat around Nintendo, where it's like, you want, people want to be associated with it. Yeah. No matter how shady they may be. But at the Sony press conference. This is not shady. We did get a mention, literally a mention, of the <laughs> Zelda movie by the Sony CEO, Kenichiro Yoshida. He said, fans can expect, quote, an amazing tale of adventure and discovery. And he is, quote, excited about the upcoming movie. Wow. Now, does this impact our prediction that we would not get a significant update on the Zelda this movie in 2020. Is this a significant update? No. I agree with you fully. We're Some so people right. were saying, oh, you, you've, you've lost your prediction. No. No, How this is, is not this? significant. This is nothing. You didn't, you didn't know that the Zelda movie is going to be an amazing tale of adventure and discovery? This is literally nothing. This is less than nothing. And he, he, his excitement? Great. You wanted, you wanted me to put this in the news. What do you have to say about it? I just wanted to say that we were so right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we, you know, we, we've written stuff for presentations like this and... There is a thing where it's like, let's just include a list of some cool stuff that's coming up. Yeah. We, we don't really have anything to say, but yeah. we don't want people to, to forget, forget about, about it. it. Yeah. I mean, it, it does indicate that this is a big initiative for Sony, that they're, right. that they're psyched about doing this. Yeah. But obviously there's nothing to say. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They had, the, what did they have? The, the car that you could drive? The car that you could drive with a dual what is sense the point? What is the point of, of all this? It's all just concept stuff. What is the point of it? Like, I would like this stuff to be a bit more tangible. Like, and this is a, or yeah, we're, we're putting so many... this in a product. Who's driving a car with a dual sense? There's so many things at CES, I feel like, where it just, like, never comes to fruition. So, like, what's right. the, what is the It's point? just a, a zany thing that I put together. I had Isn't real, that amazing? I had a real, like, annoying thing that happened to me last night with my dual sense where oh, no. it, like, would not sync for some reason to my PS5. Oh. And I had to, like, reset it, pushing that tiny little button in even, the back. Even cabling it did nothing? Yep. I cabled it. I had Then oh. I had to do a full, like, hard reset on both things. Uh-oh. The PS5 and the controller. And I just I had a thought. I'm like, Going thank goodness. 70 miles down the highway. This yeah, happens. my controller yeah. desyncs I mean, or runs out of batteries. The battery is and definitely going to And then I just, like, crash yeah. in, in a fiery car accident. Great. I don't want this car. Jeez. Anyways. Okay. to work eventually. Mr. Sakurai has revealed that his YouTube channel will be wrapping it up really? in 2024. Yeah. I'll read the quote. It's a bit late to be saying this, but Happy New Year. I'm planning to wrap up Masahiro Sakurai on creating games sometimes this year. Until then, I hope you'll stay tuned. And there have also been some other statements uh, that he's been making about how you know he, he is at core, his core, a game developer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's no firm connection to anything that he is working on. I think maybe you were a little bit more surprised about this news than I was. I wasn't surprised, but I was just like, this is another indication that Switch 2 is coming out. Because mm. Maybe he's been- Time Nintendo, to get back to work. Nintendo's like, hey. Your little vacation's over. Wrap this up, <laughs> feed the cat, and let's get back to it. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is such like a, like a passive aggressive Nintendo move where they're like, you, you sir. 
wrap it up. We gave you all your behind the scenes content. Yeah, we gave you, we gave you, we did not bother you. That was part you, of the deal. And you were telling your Awada stories or whatever. And now it's time for you to like pack, pack it up and get back to work. You got to do all these things for Switch 2, you know, we, we need, we need stuff to be done. Also, I had another thought where like, when Nintendo was announcing stuff for Switch 2, they may want to include Sakurai yeah. in official Nintendo videos. Sure. They do not want him to also have his own channel where it could be like confusing or, or whatever. Like could he, still, he could do both. Not, not Nintendo's not going to let him do that. Do both? Me? Do you know them? For yes. him to appear in a video saying, yeah, the Switch 2 is great. Well, like he might be like, I'm developing this game. Right. And I'm going to appear in all these, like, directs. No, no even, I, oh, I think it was, was it the Wii U or the 3DS? There was a video where it was, like, just just developers talking about yeah. the hardware. Yeah. There were no games mentioned. They, he, he could be he could be many, He could be in that, in yeah. All in many of those right. videos. And I don't think The they Switch want... 2 is truly a breakthrough <laughs> in interactive <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think Nintendo does not like that. He has his own thing and he can be out there saying his own own stuff when he's going to be appearing officially on Nintendo's yeah. content. So, they told him, pack it up. Sh yeah, I mean... Shut her down. I, I I always felt like there was, you know, a limit to how much he could share on this, and I I never felt like, oh, he's retired from games to, no, do, to do this forever. absolutely not. Like, I always saw it as a nice break, for, break him for him to yeah. do something different that still engages his brain and is still around games, yeah. but does give him a chance to rest and get some new perspectives and do something different. So I'm not surprised that it's ending. He's done so much. Um, so awesome. Really at no benefit to himself. Right. And that'll that'll hopefully that channel remains up as a great just archive of information for people. But uh, yeah, I, I, I imagine he is probably feeling more refreshed than he has in the past going into whatever his next project is. I think so too. And hopefully he has some like, yeah, like you said, new inspiration or new perspective after taking a little time off. Like he's such a, he works such so deeply. Like he just pours every, you know, fiber of his soul into everything he does. Like he deserves to pull out of that for a little bit and have a little rest. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Kid Icarus coming to Switch 2, right? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Now with more AR, AR cards. We got AR cards. Here you can we make go. those. Yes. AR cards Great. are back. We're going to get a little stand. We for have 9,000 new AR cards that you, can't, your, that you won't be able to get. For your hands to be permanently broken forever. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Last story is a Microsoft story and maybe a Nintendo story. Mm. It's about uh, Hi Fi Rush perhaps coming to the Switch. Yeah. And I've also seen Sea of Thieves getting caught up in this conversation, mm -hmm. but some people who are insiders, like Nate the Hate, I think our friend Jeff Grubb has maybe been involved in this as well, yeah. talking about how there might be some um, previous Xbox exclusives coming to other platforms. I think there were also recently some ratings that maybe popped out about Hi-Fi Rush specifically coming to Switch and, and PlayStation, so maybe this is more of a... When, when it happens, it, then the smoke, if it there's fire? if it happens, to be completely clear, uh -huh. this was a prediction I had last year. Last, last year, year yeah. I predicted that this is something that would make sense for they Microsoft had some to do. Exclusivity period, and Microsoft is doing one of those developer directs. That's true. About that about a year after, so maybe it could have been one year exclusivity. It is. It's and absolutely so, one year. Yeah, exclusive. so everybody keep track of those one year <laughs> things because oftentimes things can happen what after is a year. Yeah. Right. This got people very worked up. A lot of Xbox fans were upset. Oh, that is not like, an exclusive anymore. Like, what, we're just going third party, Phil Spencer. What's the deal? Oh. What are your feelings about this? I feel like it's fine to. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I don't care. I do. I don't. I, I honestly don't care. But Did you ever play High Five Rush? I have not played this game. What's the deal? I've been busy. Oh. I, I just. I mean, is it really that big of a deal when you've yes. you've had an exclusive for a year? Like, I think. That well, when Zelda band, when Zelda comes to the Xbox, we'll see how big a deal it is. I don't care either. I don't care about that either. <laughs> You're beyond care. it. You have achieved enlightenment. I have. Fine. I'm a Zen. I'm a Zen experience. Okay. Do you care? So I do think 
Why do you care? I mean, Xbox has been, I feel, telegraphing that their big picture play is beyond a console. Exactly. It is for Xbox to become a service mm -hmm. that is available on a wide range of platforms. of platforms. Some of which are currently perhaps competing directly with Xbox. So I don't think they're ready to do that yet, but I do think that they are looking for some opportunities to sort of test the waters and start to get people more comfortable with that. So I think this is a perfect game to do it. I think this, this is a game that plays well, you know, would play well and have an audience on the Switch for sure. Uh, I think this is not the sort of like Halo level system seller game where it's like, why, why should I buy an Xbox? Mm -hmm. It's like, nobody cares if Hi-Fi Rush like nobody's making a decision exactly. to buy an Xbox or not of Hi -Fi based Rush. on what Hi-Fi Rush is on. So it's fine for them to put it somewhere else. See if Thieves makes sense because that's kind of like a live service game. Like you need players. You need mm -hmm. a player you base, need a player base yeah. on that. Um, and where is the these, biggest player base? All these games are also Switch. these games are also on PC. Also, didn't we already go through this nonsense with Minecraft? Well, Minecraft is different in that it started multi-platform. I, I suppose. And they just kept that going. So I think that is maybe slightly different All right. in that there, there, was, there was kind of no change of course there, whereas this started as an exclusive and now potentially is going bigger. But, sure. I mean, don't, don't you feel like they've been telegraphing this, dropping some hints yes. here and there? That's why I'm not surprised at all. And I feel like this is how they feel like they can carve out a very specific niche for themselves in the industry. Right. Because they're not going to win on first party exclusives, honestly. Like let's be real, they're not going to win there. They they have sort of this other proposition around Game Pass, but that is wrapped up in this proposition about accessibility and cloud gaming and yeah. having your having Also when you just bought the ability to play all your stuff everywhere. When you just bought Activision and the big thing you bought it for is going to be available on everything. Exactly. So it's all about accessibility right. in terms of playing anything you you want anywhere. Right. You know? So I that, think that's, that's a, their, I mean, their new, like, stretch goal. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that's a cool possibility. I mean, what, yeah. uh, uh, what was the... Stadia. 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 <laughs> Stadia. I mean, that was something that didn't work for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the streaming tech is pretty good now. Yeah, I mean, exactly. maybe maybe not the one Nintendo's got for their <laughs> streaming games. This is why they need Xbox. But I mean, the Xbox Microsoft. streaming is like really good. Yeah, like, there's a lot of times when I'm playing a game on Xbox, like I wouldn't even bother to download it. It's like no, I'll I just never, I'll just stream it. I never download any of those because I don't I don't see much of a difference at all. And they have all those partnerships with those TV companies too that right. have like it built in and right. stuff. It's so like, I don't yeah, I don't think this is like some bad outcome or some bad future where it becomes a service. Right. And you don't need to spend the money to get the console to run. To crunch, crunch pixels. Right. Um, it's the future. I'm not going to understand if you're into the console wars. This is this is not good news for you. If you're 12 and you're but, into the console wars. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe maybe we are. We, have, beyond, we have ascended beyond that. Might be beyond that. Yes, sorry. Right. Yeah, we're not going to go there. Now, is this announced in the de developer direct that maybe as the time you're you're hearing this has already happened? I'm not sure that's perfect news for that because I, I don't think, think so. I think that, that that's for the Xbox audience. I was going to say that you want to focus on telling the Xbox audience right. with new cool things that they're going to get excited right. about. Right. So they they might announce it in a Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Are we on that watch now? Are we on it? I think I we're guess. getting. I think we're, we're getting, getting close. close. I think we're getting close we're to like being February on that watch. or something, but it's not February yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's the news. A very healthy uh, news section Hefty? after a couple a couple weeks of not. Yeah. And it's almost time to get into some questions from our community. But did you know that every question we get comes from our wonderful, beautiful Patreon community? That's right. They are supporting us um, through all sorts of great ways. And if you're not part of our lovely Patreon community yet, join us, please, at patreon.com slash Kit and Krista. We take all of our questions for this podcast from them, as you said, but we also give them a ton of exclusive content. Yes. Like bonus Q&As. We answer the spicy questions just for our Patreon uh, family. They also get early access to po our podcast and a lot of our other content. We do a weekly behind the scenes. We do That's right. monthly meetups. Lots of fun things mm -hmm. happening over at Patreon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Check it out. 
Let's get into these questions. First question is from Banana Bread Slice. Hi, Kit and Krista. How do you think Nintendo will approach naming the Switch successor? Switch 2 is a popular theory, but I wonder if Nintendo will worry about confusing consumers that it's just a nicer Switch like a Switch OLED. Likewise, I have seen people suggest Super Switch as a throwback to the naming convention of NES and Super NES, but I think that also creates confusion that's not a brand new system. After the Wii, Wii U debacle, Nintendo cannot afford any confusion. I think they should give it a new name entirely. My idea is Nintendo Duo, which implies the number two, as in, as in Switch 2, and also hints at the dual functionality as both a handheld or dock console. What do you think? Oh, yes. Naming is going to be a big win or lose kind of thing because it is important to get it right. It's hard. It's a hard thing, too, because you can, no matter what the name you come up with is, you can argue both sides. Exactly. Of like, this is confusing, or the people are going to get confused, or this is great. Yeah. People are going to love this. Or people are going to understand it immediately. There's no, when you're on the inside, there is no perfect answer. And you can often, that's why it's easy to make the wrong decision. And you can also talk yourself into We've it. made the wrong decision ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It's so hard to make the right decision. And it's so easy to, it, it's so easy to confuse people. And it's so, um, like, the, the, the threshold of whether or not someone gets confused is so much less than you think. Like, it is so easy for them to get confused, even though it's perfectly clear to you on the inside, mm -hmm. which is what I think happened with Wii, Wii U. Um, but I, I do not think that they're going to move away from the Switch branding. Yeah, They have done so much to make this a thing. And, you know, branding and, like, attaching your company to a brand is such, like, hard work, you know? And after seven years of brand building... They're not going to throw that away and come up with a whole new brand that they're going to have to educate people on. So it's definitely going to be some iteration of Nintendo Switch blank or blank Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Um, I think that going with Switch 2, as boring as it is, is probably the best thing for them. Like just having it be sort hmm. of like that PlayStation model, like, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. whatever. Um, but I don't think they're going to do that. It, that, that. That would be like the smart, easy way to do it. And then it, it's easy for you to explain. This is the next iteration of the Switch. It's called Switch 2. Um, but I think they're gonna. They're probably going to do something more Nintendo-y. So right. I can see it being like a Super Switch or Nintendo Switch, blah, blah. Don't, don't, call, I'm, the thing that's coming to mind is like Nintendo Switch Deluxe and I'm like, this is a oh. terrible name and it would be very confusing. Don't call it that. Yeah. Or some sort of Nintendo Switch blank, you know, um, to indicate that it's the next version of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think they might overthink this and, and get themselves into kind of a, a bad situation with the name. Yeah. Yeah, Switch 2, I mean, is just what the community has... Kind of you don't in, think in, informally agreed is like, yeah, that's that's what we're gonna call it until we know. You don't think so. So I don't um I think there's a, a lot of different scenarios. Um that's definitely one of them. I think you know, PlayStation though, like that's it's always been PlayStation, always will be PlayStation. Right. Switch, it may not always be the thing. But that it Nintendo's might, but making. it's gonna be this thing for like a little bit longer. Sure. So until they do like a whole redesign and a yeah. new one. I think it's a fine. I think it's a fine name. I think it accomplishes what you need it to. Well, what would you like the um, name to be? The Super Switch also does, you know, that the, roughly the same. Roughly. Sort, uh, sort of thing. Roughly. Um. You don't have a name. Yeah. I know. I, I don't have a name in mind, but you do, you do need to avoid the the half step, kind of, thing. I mean the. the the numbers get round. Like, what, what iPhone are we on now? The fifty, like in ten years, you're like, iPhone twenty five iPhones. You said that you wanted it to be called NX. Yes, there we go. Yeah, call it the NX, <laughs> Nintendo NX. That is such a that that. Well, is it Nintendo NX or just NX? Nintendo Switch NX. They gotta put. They gotta put the Nintendo in there. You gotta put Switch, Switch in there though. The Nintendo NX. Switch oh. NX. No, that's that's lame. Switch NX. No. NX Switch. Nintendo. The Nintendo NX. I hate it already. <laughs> I already hate it. I hate it. Oh, could it be like Switch Extreme? Extreme. Oh my god, no. Nintendo Switch Extreme. Please no. It's gonna be like an energy drink. 
They're gonna get there. It's edgy now. No, I don't like that. No. Switch cube. They just need to avoid the half step confusion. And if you keep switch, that's always a possibility. It always is. Of and it's it's amazing, like the way that you think people's brains will work is, not is what, often is not, not what actually what happens. happens. Yeah, it's not. Like, oh, so it's it's just like the OLED. It's just like it's just like a slightly upgraded switch. No, it's the entirely next one. Yeah, so it's like kind of a little upgrade. No, it's a new generation of consoles. Well, you want, you're going to want to convince them it is a new generation <laughs> right. of consoles, but, but sometimes it, it probably is just going to be a little upgrade. But if people make up their mind right away, it's hard to, that that first impression is hard to change. It is, and then they're going to be really um, like if they think that it's just a little upgrade, right? And you show them the price point, and it's not yeah, the price that they want. They're like, no, right? And then that then you're in. A real That's pick. why this then is you're all in hard. a real pickle. Yeah, this is just hard. Yeah. Harder than you'd think. Good luck, Nintendo. Jeffrey Hernandez says, Hey, Kit and Krista, in the 100th episode, you mentioned how you felt that Nintendo Minute became a thing after the Nintendo Switch unboxing episode. How important and popular do you think Nintendo Minute was prior to the unboxing video? Nintendo Minute had been going on for about four years at that point. Do you think it was niche? I don't think it was niche. Um, I, I think we had a very like dedicated audience for it, but that audience was just limited, like we were saying before, because... Nintendo's reach was limited overall at right. that time because there wasn't that many people playing Wii U and playing games on Wii U. It was sort of that time in the company where you were very reliant on sort of like these core Nintendo fans, and we hadn't expanded beyond that. Yeah, I mean, we were so reliant on that YouTube channel because unlike, like, you know, the Kit and Krista channel, it's all this. It's all us. Whereas the Nintendo channel is, hey, we've got trailers. Here, there's a Nintendo Direct. We've got some commercials. Yeah. And then we were on that. Right. So, you know, people might sign up for that for a variety of reasons. And people, you know, maybe didn't sign up to sub subscribe to see us specifically. But it was something that they got exposed to because they did. Yeah. So that and channel. And some people hated it. Yeah. There were so many people that were like, I did not sign. I, More I ads, signed, please. I signed up to watch trailers. Who are these two yahoos? Right. Then don't watch Get them it. out of here. But. You know. That channel exploded when the Switch came out. Right. So that, you know, helped our fortunes and brought in new audiences mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, and that was reflected in the viewership numbers where, you know, we were saying that that one was our first million view video. And we had a lot of million view videos after that. And we didn't have any before then. Right. And that was just, it's just a, you know, pure function of the audience. Yeah. Halo effect from the, the just entire Nintendo audience growing because of Switch. Right. And it continued for a long time, as you guys mm -hmm. know. So that was just like sort of becoming more and more visible to a bigger audience. Yes. Michael64 asks, Hi, Kit and Krista, with the upcoming release of Mario vs. Donkey Kong Remake, there have been a lot of comparisons I've seen on Twitter about the new Mario renders being compared to the old ones. Nintendo always seems to do this where they update old renders instead of just making new ones. Why do they update old renders of Mario instead of making new ones? They obviously still make new renders for new games, but why do they always update the old ones? Thank you both for all that you do. Do you know how hard it is to make any change to anything <laughs> on Nintendo from a graphic perspective? It's like impossible. Like there is such tight control over every pixel that you see in a Mario render. It is just impossible to make a new like make a new one um so yeah much easier to just add some detail like this one i think the render just added some detail to mario's overall it's no longer mesh overall it's no longer mesh which is, it, it is looks, the official fabric of nintendo it but is. uh it's yeah. not great for overall mario's overalls. mars little buttons look very, shiny very nice yeah. it looks more like or like a real like a plastic bra brass yeah. button right Eyes are looking a little bit more lively. The hair maybe a little bit more textured. Yeah, so they're just, yeah. yeah, exactly. They're taking the route that is the only route really available to them, which is not to make anything new. It's just to update something that already exists. But I think also, especially for Mario, there's like, these poses are iconic. Right. So we want these poses to always be out there. Like this pose, this is an iconic Mario pose. Even the silhouette of this pose, like, yes, this is Mario. So they would never want to go away from something like that. So mm -hmm. it makes sense to like, yeah, let's, you know, we've got some new tweaks that we want to make. Yeah. But let's always keep that in circulation to some exactly. degree. Exactly, yeah. It's another part of branding. Yes, right. Maverick Nate says, Hi, Kit and Krista. Now that Paper Mario 2, The Thousand Year Door is being remade this year, what are your top most desired GameCube games you would like to see remade or re-released on the Switch and Switch 2? 
Mine may be a bit unpopular, but I would love to see Star Fox Adventures on a modern console. Thanks for your consideration. Oh. Yeah, those GameCube games are great. I would like to see the original Strikers oh, remade. Sure. Please, please, Nintendo. Hmm. Redeem your mistake from the other Mario Strikers that sucked and make this one. Remake this one because that was a good one. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Um, I would also like, obviously, Double Dash. Um, I guess we don't have to remake it, remake it, but it would be great to play that style. <laughs> The, the, the thing that sees, seems like a big opportunity for me is like multiplayer games that now could have online. Yeah. So any big online game yeah, Strikers like, like would that. Yeah, would be great. Yeah. Um, Mario Kart, um, like Star Fox Assault was the mm, other Star Fox game yeah, that had multiplayer. Um, even some like obscure stuff like, like um, Custom Robo, that was a oh, fun Custom game. Robo was a fun game. That would be a really fun yeah. online game to take your little custom robo robot in there robot. and do some stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like just just the fact of I mean if we're talking about just re-releases on like NSO or something like that, like mm, I could I don't really need that because like I have a lot of these games, whatever. Yeah. But adding online, that would be a significant upgrade. But if if they do want to go all out and, and do, you know, a significant like a overhaul. Remake? A full remake, like we've been talking about this, you know, F Zero um, GX. Like, yeah, that's cool. That's different. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I'd like that. Yeah, exactly. That'd be great. That Connor guy asks, "Hi, Kit and Krista. As I'm typing this, Nintendo just dropped a new trailer for the Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake. Apparently, it has about three x the number of levels of the original." Looking at how long to beat, the OG game was about two hours long, so it seems reasonable to assume that the Switch version will offer about six hours of content for a $50 game. I understand that hours of content in a game shouldn't dictate the price, but this seems a bit off to me. It almost feels like this should have been an eShop game that came out in January for $20 to $30 for kids to use up their eShop Christ Christmas eShop cards. This has me thinking about why Nintendo hasn't done as many eShop titles in the Switch era as they did in the Wii U slash 3DS era. Pushmo, NES Remix, etc. Oh yeah, NES Remix. I remember that. That was fun. I yeah. actually like that those games on, on DS, uh, 3DS and on um, the eShop for Wii U. Um, I think it's because they know they can sell you a Mario game for that price, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know much about... I haven't played the original, so I don't know, like, the length and, and sort of the amount of content that's in this game, but, yeah, 50 bucks is pretty steep for for a game. I I, I don't, again, I, I, without having played the original, I don't know, like, what kind of, like, caliber length this game is, but $50 is a lot of money for a game, you know, and, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like it's, it is pretty expensive. I actually have, like, that feeling for, I had that feeling a little bit on Mario Wonder, where I thought that that game was a little short for the price. And and, and you and you thought that's it. This was a rant that I had last year. I was like, I'm going to be so annoyed when people start saying this should be a you know a ten dollar eShop game, and you just did that. I didn't say it was should be a ten dollar eShop game. What I, was your point then? Maybe that game should have been like ten dollars less, like fifty dollars. It was sixty dollars, right? Oh my gosh! For a Mario Wonder game that was, it took me like two days to play that entire game. Like two, three days? I don't know. Come on! It feels a little bit expensive. A little bit. What's the deal? Don't you think? This flagship Mario game? Yeah, we'll give it to them for 10 bucks less. Why not? I mean, they're not going to do Enjoy it. Enjoy spending saying. $70 for it next time. I know. I'm, Get ready I'm for that. I'm just saying, like, it is a little, a little lacking in terms of Well, maybe of you should have enjoyed the online features more than you did. It sounds like it's your fault. Maybe they should have not done that and made the game cheaper. Wow. Anyways, what do you <laughs> You think? just said that this is a Mario game, so it's $50. That's what I'm saying. This is a flight is a 2D Mario game. That's what they're doing, But they should though. drop the price for that? that? That's what they're doing. I'm not saying that they're gonna. I'm just saying that that is what they're doing to you, the customer, the person that's paying 50 bucks. Get out of here. It's because they know they can, because it's Mario, because they know they can. And that's fine, because Mario, um, of course. You're I'm not going to react to this. I'm just going to pretend you didn't say that. The question about the eShop... I mean, I think they, they learned, like, yeah, the eShop is, is covered. There's a lot of stuff there. People are making games for that. We don't really need to get involved in that very much. Yeah. Um, 
So they're probably thinking, yeah, we'll stick to really high-end stuff that can be really just distributed all sorts of ways and really push it that way. Because, yeah, I mean, as, this, as stuff gets bigger and bigger, they're probably less and less interested in exactly. smaller scale stuff. Vers can, versus the 3DS and Wii were like, we just need it. We just need traction on anything. We need content. Yeah. We just need some game. And we have this new eShop that we need to show like really, what it can do. Right. We need to like fill it with something. Right. Because right? again, when the, when the eShop launched on the 3DS, that was, was like so sad. Thing. There was like, nothing. Sad. I was buying trash on that. Because I was like, I just want to buy something on this. I'll buy this trash. I, bought some, I remember I bought some golf game. There was trash. Because I was like, I, this is probably bad, but I just want to get something from it. Yeah, if it exists, it you bad. should have something. It was so bad. Yeah. Last yeah. questions from VGM Life. Hi, Kit and Krista. With the upcoming release of the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy, when is that coming out? This week, I think. Oh, wow. I've recently been thinking about another text-heavy adventure game, specifically Famicom Detective Club. I was wondering if you could speak to its marketing. It's an interesting game from a historical standpoint, but it also seems like the epitome of the word niche. What was the thinking inside NOA as you approached introducing this game to the West? Yeah, I remember this game, and like it definitely immediately went into the category of like we're not going to support it that much. Pack and ship. That's right. <laughs> not to be like we didn't. We didn't actually do real pack and ship though. Yeah, our pack and ships were like we we wanted to do real pack and ship because we. We knew that it was like a lot of resources you can't, to do it for it's every game. It's not allowed. Game, but it's not allowed actually to do that. At I've worked on some real pack and ship stuff. That you'd be surprised. I'm like, this deserves a lot more than a pack and ship. But that's all we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We should, we should, we should, we should have done more. Pack they, and I ship think they did stuff. interviews for this. Yeah, they did. I mean, they. I think. I mean, it was very clear from the very beginning that this was a niche, like you said game and it was going to reach a very specific audience so the the marketing activities that were done for this game were very much in line with that thinking like it wasn't going to have like a huge preview event with nine thousand bananas right it was going to have like developer interviews for a very specific type of media outlet that reaches this kind of niche audience you know it was going to be like that kind of stuff from mark from a marketing standpoint versus like a big like mario game that's going to get like a whole you know PR stunt behind it. For $20. For $20. Yes. Yes, we just contradicted the answer uh, of the last question. <laughs> oh, no. well. <laughs> we just said mean? Nintendo is not is not interested in small fry games. And then we go on to <laughs> Famicom Detective Well, they didn't Club. think it was small fry, did it? Um, they didn't yeah. think it was. There may have been some big, There was like, somebody that was like, no, this is a... This big, is, was, didn't Mr. Sakamoto work on this? Yeah. It may have been like a passion project for it's him. It's a passion. There's yeah. like a lot of these games that you think is small, but it... Inside Nintendo, there's like politics yeah. that has dictated this to be like one that deserves all this marketing mm -hmm. support. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. There you go. Them's the questions. Well, Great questions, everybody. Yeah. All right. Should we wrap up this wonderful episode by shouting out our superstars? Yes. Okay, here we go. Aaron Hash. Ben Eichhorn. Maru Mayhem. Eigenverse. Kiss My Flap Jack. Mike Chin. Roy Eschke. Switching it up. Underscore. What's the face on? VGM Life. Link, the hero of Winds. Angela Bycroft and her pig Molly. Thomas O'Rourke. Kyle LaBeouf. Roberto Nieves. Frederick Wolf Conradson. Andrew Yuhas. Chili. And a Bruce Dash. Oh boy. All right, here we go with our one up club A Ron Burgundy. Ale Alejandro. Astro Dev. Awesome 46. Bad Moon Horizon. Ben GB. Be Bookum Dano. Bookishly Fab. Brad SF56. Brooke Obscura. Brovac Novak. Cameron. Shelly Squirrel. Christopher Lay. Captain Alex. Crimcat. Sea Roper 17. Cynical Squid. Dachshund. Doinko. Elite Peach. Espars 50. Fart Free 69. Fairbound. Fernie and Jess Forever. Fox Deploy. Garrett Hullfish. Garth the Wolf. Gartooth. G Sun 101. Fox. Oops. No. She's someone Heroic. online. Heroic. Sorry. Iris Marin. Jay Rando. Jabroni Jones. Jeffrey Hernandez. Jeremy Lewis. Jerry, 92602. Jesse Hernandez. John Responte. Jonathan Rowe. Jordan Collette. Jordan Hemmerly. Joshua Clements. Juji Fruit. Justin Leminger. Kawa, 2796. Keith Kwan. Kevin Delane. Kilo Kibo. Christorati Kid. Christopia Party With Me. Kyle Gamer, Barry Rookie. 
Kyle Kretzer, Liddell Stickman, Lazy Cat for Coffee, Lex, Lit, Macho Potato, Mad Dog 5981, Magnificent Easy G plus Callie Marie, Marky Man 64, Mario Man 392, Mecha Dragon 101, Medallion, Megan, Michael Cravens, Mikey, Mr. Ryan 07, Motomania, Mr. Andy Pong, Mr. Beans and Dip, MSM Poke Gamer, My Tran, Nasir, Nathan Bur Burkhart, Nick, Ninja 11, Panda Buns, Pangy, Palsy Pace, Paul Gill Network, Prime Factor, Prince Charmless, Reaver, Rain Tech, Ryeth One, Rob Osborne, Rocks, Ryanetta, Sharif Jackson, Shinryu, Slowbro, Schnabel, Spicy Munchkin, Steel's Trone, Tales of Link, Tay 120 and 64, Tech Magic, The Shark Among Men, Thomas Alvarez, Three Rivers, Timmy V, Topher Schmofer, Totally Joe Ed, Travis Torline, Trajawi, Tugs Puppy Bear, Tusku, Tyler Geis, Fesfes, Video Game Stupid, Viridian, Virtual Bot, Weeb Kingdom, WG Grizzy, What Up Khalil, Wicked Davy, Zudiver, Zalgaroth, Zapati, and Zride. Okay. Two years later, we're still looking for the perfect run on the One Up Club. <laughs> <laughs> been two years yet. We're still a little awesome there. games done quick. Master this. No. I dare them. <laughs> I dare them. Yeah, I challenge you. Um, don't forget to join us at patreon.com slash kit and Krista to keep all of this going. Thank you very much. And if you're watching on video, you can go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can give this video a thumbs up and you can also leave us a comment. And if you are listening on audio, you can also subscribe, give us a five star rating and a written review if you please. And we are on the socials. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and the Reds. That's right. All right. Wrapping it up, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.